Hey, hey, everybody. It is my favorite time of the week. Uh, it's just me for a second. I promise Dice K is coming. Uh, he had a work meeting that went a little late, and he will be here uh, probably in the next 10 minutes or so. So I actually picked up a pile of pickups that I haven't even shown Patreon yet, and I wanted to talk about some of these because there are some underrated uh, indie labels that we, me, I, I'm, I'm the one giving attention here, that I don't give Oh, no. <coughs> excuse me i'll give enough attention to and i wanted to go through those but first uh three i wanted to highlight first uh i got two in from mvd for uh review the first is the gamblers i honestly didn't even hear that this was coming out this is a part of the mvd visual line from uh vci it's somehow labeled as both on the side and uh, it's got a commentary on this the other vci one that came out that i i did talk about on the show is a bullet for sandoval and uh, Ernest Borgnine, this is one I've been itching to see since it got announced. I'm very, very curious to check this out. Uh, but now I want to hear about some of you people, because I'm sure some of you have seen this. I want to hear, how, how bad is this? Uh, I, I've heard some very interesting, positive reviews in the last couple of weeks that I was not expecting. But th it sounds like a lot of people are super into this. Uh, what do you think? Have you watched this yet? Uh, for those that don't know... This is a Scream Factory uh, steelbook you can see there that was released exclusively through Walmart. No idea why. Uh, this is the first time they've done that with Walmart, but it is available now. Um, from what I'm hearing, some people are pleasantly surprised, basically, is the review that, that it has been given from many. And now... <laughs> All of these, all of these comments. Stance has never heard of it, itching to see it. Uh, Nathan's laughing at it. What's going on, Nathan? Wave says, oh my. John Stump says it's awful. I don't. I kind of want to watch it just to not heed your warning, John. Uh, uh, Key Ray says it's fun. Nice. Yes, Stan. Somebody did end up showing that in a fourth grade class, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, Griff says, you know what? First, I heard Blood and Honey was terrible, but more and more are saying it's good now. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, most people at first were like, this is garbage. But now they're basically saying it's it's pretty decent. Uh, Paul got the Umbrella Blue. That that package looked amazing. Uh, also hearing mixed things. Yeah, Umbrella brought it way, way, way before Scream Factory did. Uh, bought it and dug it for what it was. Uh, yes, everybody's showing it. I just got it, Ragnar. Come on, I can be excited. Uh I, I'm sorry, Wave. I cannot, I guarantee you, I cannot watch it by next week. I have, oh man, I almost just said multiple titles. Uh, I have multiple things I have to watch and submit something on by next week. So can't do it by next week, but we'll see. Uh, Stan's his first comment was on Ernest Borgnine, not on Winnie the Pooh. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Um, okay, some indies. A lot of stuff. Uh, one of these isn't truly an indie well i guess two of them kind of aren't but uh some stuff that's overlooked that i really want people to check out because uh they they do some exciting stuff overall i'm gonna i'm gonna do the one that most people have seen um melusine the first big title that they announced the tale of tiffany lust this thing if you've not seen an unboxing of this yet or the actual packaging for this this thing is gorgeous obviously it's overlooked primarily because it's an adult title, but uh, it's something that should be seen to be believed. I, I definitely think more people need to check this out. This release is, um, it, it was a good title for Melusine to have as number one, I will say that. This is an astonishing release from them, and if you haven't checked it out yet, I would suggest it. Uh, now, another one that people are overlooking a lot, primarily because they've been fairly quiet over the last couple of years. Arbelos. Arbelos put out Cinematic Sorceress, the films of Nina Menkes, and uh, this slipcover, first of all, look at the colors on this. Uh, it's got this little metal foiling on it, and every single one of their limited releases from their site comes in this envelope slipcover, and then the film's on the inside, and usually there's some postcards, something like that. Uh, something about Arbelos, it's just that they get overlooked. And one of the titles uh, from them, I'm about to do a review on the channel for Chameleon Street. Amazing movie. But they have been doing so many good things, and we're talking about a new title from them tonight. So I really wanted to highlight to people that these are 
fantastic. And this company deserves to be supported directly from their site. Uh, it, it's it's a great package, and they're doing amazing stuff. And if you don't know, it's the same people that own Canadian International Pictures that run Arbelos. So well worth it. Uh, two more. Um, one of these is from a company you have likely heard of. Uh, Play On in Germany is somebody that releases a lot of media books. They do steel books. They do uh, standard releases. I was uh, having my interest peaked because the cover on this media book is gorgeous. Uh, obviously, they are playing off of the old Evil Dead poster, but Deadstream, the media book, just got this in fairly recently, and it is a beautiful sight to behold. Uh, Deadstream just came out on physical in the U.S. finally. Uh, it got a, I think it was a Walmart exclusive Blu-ray and a standard release. I really enjoy this movie. I, if you've not seen it, it's a pretty decent found footage take uh, on like a, a vlogger, somebody going through that. But man, this, the cover art on this is just special. Love this release. And the last one, uh, one that is a true indie. I don't talk about them enough because they don't release enough. Scream Team Releasing, and their website is screamteamreleasing.com. They just recently released a, a film called Heebie-Jeebie TV, and uh, one of the options on their site is this giant box to come with the film. And when you open it up, it comes with the film in a slip, and you can get it autographed. Uh, you can see a couple of the autos there. And they also included autograph poster. There's a pin, some sticker, some other stuff like that. Uh, there's also this full book. And it is just a, a really interesting package for uh, an indie to put out. And I've heard really great things about this. So if you've not ever checked out Scream Team releasing, please do. Um, I, I'm rather impressed with a lot of the stuff that they've put out. It is sometimes lower budget horror but it's not uh, it's not like no budget horror where everything is filmed poorly. They are actually made uh, with with some panache. They're done with a, a full uh, fil full film crew. They are filmed, you know, in good interesting locations. Uh, but now, now that I have uh, stalled long enough, I think uh, alert alert Kino cells is all that is man interesting. Uh, now that I've stalled long enough, it's just about time to bring on Daisuke. Uh, he is popping in right now, and uh, as soon as he is here, I will add him. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say hello to a couple more people before he joins in. Uh, let's see. Antonio saw the media book for Planet of the Vampires. Looks amazing. I agree. Uh, what's going on, Caveman? Uh, Joe Jack says, I do want to buy more, and I'm close. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, no, not necessarily because of the packaging. I, I was just highlighting that. I, I think it's a decent movie for sure, Ragnar. Uh, let's see. Uh, looks like a load of poo. I've heard good things, like I said. Ernest Borgnine would have made a good Winnie the Pooh. Good Winnie the Pooh. Uh, or perhaps uh, some other roles in that for sure. Let's see. Craziest thing about the Dopey Poo film was the director viciously went after critics on social media despite a huge profit. I did not hear that. That's wild. Uh, all right. What else we got going on? I think the Germans don't pay for rights and just push it out. That's why they put so much into their packaging. He's going to go after a small German. That's true for some, but also not true for many. I've sent a list out of the reputable companies that you can go to to get some of those uh, licensed titles. And uh, now it's already time to bring on my guest of honor tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce everybody to Mr. Daisuke. Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Thanks for waiting. Sorry for uh, the delay. Uh, the Sorry for being late. I apologize for that. Don't worry about it at all. It, it, it happens to the best of us. But you're here. Hello. Welcome. Oh, it's a real honor. Wow. Thank you so much. It, this is very cool. Very, very cool. And thanks very much for the kind invitation. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very nervous and uh, looking forward to this immensely. 
I have no idea why you're nervous. I'm nervous just to speak to you. It's it's an honor for me. I mean, I, a lot of us, especially a lot of people in the chat, have been listening and watching you for years. So it's an immense honor to to have your presence in our presence. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. You've got lots of people saying hello. Uh, lots of people excited to see you. Uh, we, we've got, look at this, two of my favorite YouTubers here together. That's amazing. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, we got you on this week because we got criteria announcements to discuss tonight. That, that's a big deal. Oh, yes. They occurred, what is it, a, a couple days ago? So, yeah, yeah. yeah great. Great stuff. We got a lot to cover tonight. So, uh, first of all, welcome. You, you've been in the States for a few months now, right? That's right. Yes, I'm now in uh, on the West Coast. So, yeah. How's everything been since you made the trip here? It's been busy, I must say. It's it's been uh, 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 not without a uh, certain degree of say, you know, uh, having a lot of things to do. But uh, it's all good. I'm I'm very grateful for this opportunity, and uh, I speak for myself and my family, saying thank you very much for for welcoming us here. And uh, uh, just uh, yeah, uh, we'll be here for I don't know for how long, maybe a few years. And then we'll be going back wow. to Japan, but uh, we'll try to enjoy ourselves as much as we can, including watching a lot of movies. So thank you very much. Thank you. Lots of opportunities for that near where you're living now, huh? That's right. Yes. Although I must say I haven't had the opportunity to go out as much as I would have liked to. Uh, I've been out a little bit, but not as much. So I wanted to, uh, uh, if I can get some more time uh, between now and the end of the year, I'll, I'd like to do that. Last, uh, I believe it was last June, I made a venture out to where you are now and was able to go to the New Beverly for the first time in my life. And uh, you went there recently, right? That's right. Yes, I, I saw uh, two films directed by Sergio Leone there. It was a real blast. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. We, we had very different experiences. I went there for a John Waters double feature. <laughs> oh, which films were they? Uh, it was, of course, polyester, and then they followed that up with Serial Mom. It was a really fun double feature. Oh, oh, very cool. Are you a John Waters fan? I I was a John Waters uh, one that dipped my toe in the water before last year, but genuinely, seeing them on the big screen with a crowd that loved his work, it, it is such a surreal experience that can change your mind on cinema when you're in that type of an environment. And man, since then, I cannot get enough, for sure. Oh, oh, awesome. What are some of your favorite John Waters films? Uh, honestly, That Night Serial Mom got pretty cemented as great in my mind, but I have watched Pink Flamingos and Polyester multiple times since that double feature, and I think they're both pretty much a masterpiece. Oh, that's so awesome. That is really awesome. What about well, you? Man. Obviously, you've seen a few uh, John Waters, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a really big fan, although I, I must say I I haven't had the opportunity to see uh, films like Polyester on the big screen. So uh, I uh, that that must have been really awesome. But I'm a huge fan of uh, John Waters films. Yeah, very much so. I'm really hoping either Criterion, because they've done many of his, or somebody else releases some of his modern films, because so many of his, they're just stuck. Like, you can't find them anywhere right now. Oh, that's right. Like a dirty shame. Yeah. Or right, they've got the two DVDs, but I don't think they've gotten a Blu-ray in North I don't America think yet. So. Right? No. Yeah. Or Cecil be demented. Right. There, there's they have been DVD releases, but nothing beyond yeah. that since wherever it was several years back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I and know I, what you mean. Yeah. I think even a couple of the DVDs might even be out of print nowadays. Oh no, kidding. Oh, yeah. that's a shame. Well, hopefully that that might you know bode well maybe for some label. Criterion or elsewhere to to release these films. You're absolutely right. That'd be nice. Uh, Benny Ford, here's a question. Have you picked up The Trial from 1962? And any thoughts on Kafka? Oh, Benny Ford, hello. It's nice to see you. Great. Um, and yes, I have picked it up, the the Criterion release. So, um, and any thoughts on Kafka? Um, gosh, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I I guess Kafka, Kafka are in the context of uh, the, the Orson Welles film, The Trial, I suppose. That's what I would assume. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to formulate what it is I'm going to hope to say in a video discussion, hopefully very soon. But it, it's, uh, I, I find it to be, it's one of my favorite works by Orson Welles. And uh, I admire it uh, very much uh, for a lot of reasons. I think because there is a certain degree of defiance 
inherent in the film. And I think in, not uh, in, in many parts, uh, for example, the great performance by Anthony Perkins, there's a sense of a type of, of a defiance that is uh, not, it, it's, it's not always hopeful, but it always has a sense of, uh, of uh, a, a sort of resilience, which I find very much in keeping with Orson Welles's work overall. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a really uh, a wonderful achievement in many ways. I would agree there. Uh, normally at the beginning here, I, I tend to cover some pickups and recent watches. Is there anything that uh, you've picked up recently that you would love to share with everybody or maybe something you watched recently that was amazing? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, I recently picked up, let's see, it was the, I don't I don't have it I, uh, uh, right here with me, but let's see, it's the, uh, I got the Best Buy exclusive release of the, the David Gordon Green Halloween trilogy on 4K. Yeah. So it's Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. So I got that. I think it was released what earlier this week. Yeah, uh, I think so. So, so I I, uh, I I got that, and or maybe last week I forget. But it but uh, it was um, uh, that that was the one where you have all the films, but they're in the steel books. Yeah. And uh, they they come in this huge tin as well. So. Um, in fact, actually, you know what? Let me. I, I'm, I'm just talking about it. I know it's here somewhere. Sure. Do, yeah. Just, uh, Go right ahead. Let yeah. Uh, let's okay. see. Carrie Mulligan wants to share about Mudbound getting a bad announcement. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute. Uh, let's see. Brendan got the Michael J. Murphy set. Yeah, that thing's amazing. There we go. That's it. I don't know if the clear is bad. So that's that's what I I got there, which is the nice. This it's like a um, it's it's uh. It's this tin case or metal case, and inside you've got the steel books in this kind of hard styrofoam. So, uh, and they have their own kind of artwork as well in this uh, steel book fashion. So, I I usually don't uh, go, get a lot of steel books, and I don't usually go for the the Walmart or Best Buy exclusives uh, right. because I I wasn't living here in the United States, but. Uh, now I, I thought, oh, this came up. And while I wouldn't call myself the biggest fan of the films per se, I think they gave me a great opportunity to revisit them. And so, um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy for these. It's, uh, and I, in, upon revisiting them, I, I found a lot to, to engage with much more. So it, it was a good opportunity for that. And also to visit Best Buy. You know, I know Best Buy has been in the news with physical media lately. Yeah. But uh, the one nearby still uh, uh, still is, uh, is making some offerings in the physical media market, at least for the time being. So it was good to, to uh, pay a visit over there as well. So. I, I I found, especially with those three films, that on rewatch, they were all much better to me on second viewing. Uh, 2018, the first one, it, it was pretty dang good the first time. But, man, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, it it had... I, I think it was because they announced the trilogy before they, they released any of them. So you knew that there wasn't really any anything at stake because there's going to be two more movies. So going into the second and the third one, you're just, oh, it, it's like the middle part of a story, basically. Um, I, I feel like once once you ingested them once, revisiting them again, it, it made me appreciate them much more. That's a really good point. That's that's really good, and I think uh, I would agree. I, I think I had a very strong reaction in that vein, in particular with the film Halloween Ends, the the third of this so called trilogy. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's much better than it than its reputation is made out to be. Yeah. Well, there's still time. There's still time between you know when it was first released and uh, you know years from now. So we'll see what happens. Uh, with future generations of uh, uh, moviegoers who watch this. But yeah, I totally understand what you mean. Totally. Well, Daisuke, you ready to get into some of these announcements? Sure, yeah. I don't, I'm don't. i really, really uh, ill-prepared when it comes to these sorts of things. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, rely on your your best judgment and, and comments here. So I'm, I'm very much an amateur when it comes to this. But uh, yes, uh, please, anything I can do to to contribute to the, con uh, to the conversation as, as uh, ill-equipped as I may be. So I apologize in advance. I will keep us flowing, but if anything catches your eye, uh, by all means, step in. Any actor or anything like that that you really appreciate, anything that you've seen, uh, we'd love to hear some commentary. Okay, uh, great. 
This first one is coming on December 12th on Blue from VCI. This is Mike Hammer's Mickey Spillane. This is an updated 2022 version, even though they're calling it the 75th Anniversary Expanded Edition. This is going to have an audio commentary on it by Max Allen Collins and a cool. bonus film called Encore for Murder. And uh, I have definitely not seen this at all, but the, the updated version is intriguing. Oh, well, well done. See, this is uh, news to me. So, th wow, very interesting. Uh, VCI, okay. Uh, that's been on my radar of late. So, uh, thank you so much for this. Happily, happily. Uh, next up is another film, uh, or another series release, actually, from Fabulous Films. We talked about one of these last week. October 30th on Blu-ray in the UK. They're releasing Ivor the Engine. The Complete Collection. This is a, a series that ran from 1959 to 77, and it's uh, some animation that looks really fun, and, and Fabulous Films has been doing a couple of these back-to-back, -back. so I, I'm intrigued because I tend to love animation. How do you feel about animation? Oh, that's really cool. So, oh, I, I haven't seen all of these. I've, I have I was able uh, to to not catch this series, but I don't know the series uh, of uh, uh, fully, of course, but yeah, I know of this, so uh, uh, I wouldn't call myself a, an expert, but that's very. This is also news to me. Very interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, as far as animation is concerned, I'm, um, I'm, uh, uh, I, as I say, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but uh, I, uh, I think, I mean, it's like a animation is it's a vast, vast grouping, so. It's like saying something akin to, "Oh, do you like film?" Uh, yeah. Do you like dramas? Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, because that's, I think that's a wonderful uh, thing about it. And, and you know, I think there are a number of labels that really represent animation works so well. Maybe uh, some uh, in, quite strongly, in fact. So, oh, this is wonderful news. Again, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert, and, and my experience has been very, very, very limited. But oh, this is uh, very welcome news indeed. Oh, very. Cool. I'm always intrigued to hear about new animation releases. Yeah. Uh, next up, December 19th, Kino is releasing their fourth in their new Kino cult line, and that is going to be Sinner. This is a Jess Franco film, and this is going to have a brand new audio commentary by Tim Lucas, which for many, that commentary alone is going to warrant a purchase because Tim Lucas is pretty great at what he does. I agree. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever heard Daisuke talk about Jess Franco. No, I haven't. Uh, I and so I haven't seen this film, uh, Sinner. So, and I don't know of this uh, particular sub uh, subcategory or lineup or 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 uh, line here. So uh, this is thank you. You're telling me this great news as well. So thank you so much for this. <laughs> uh, Kino Lorber, maniac. Kino Lorber just announced Kino Cult fairly recently, and I think the first release in this new line comes out literally next Tuesday or the Tuesday after. So this is great timing. Uh, they're releasing three, and it looks like they're getting decent titles that will appeal to individuals that are into the 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 cult and horror side of probably the, cool. mostly the seventies and eighties. Cool. I'm a huge fan of Kino Lorber generally. Yeah. So, uh, oh, this is great news. Uh, what do you know? What those other three titles are? Again, I, I'm very embarrassed for not knowing. No, you're good. I can pull them up in about four seconds because they just started to arrive at Orbit DVD today. And they are uh, The Dark Power, Lorna the Exorcist, and Alien Outlaw. Oh. Uh, okay. Lorna the Exorcist is another Jess Franco title. Yeah. And The Dark Power, this is one I believe that had a previous release from oh gosh i can't remember offhand but uh it's one that some people were were fairly excited in and then uh alien outlaw is actually a lash larue title this sounds like a very interesting lineup i'll not yeah. see what i can do about this again so so i have to figure out how am i gonna how am i gonna how's my wallet gonna survive these better, right. better we'll, we'll find a way We'll find a way there, you know, uh, to, to paraphrase Jurassic Park, what life finds a way. Yeah. <laughs> Physical media finds a way. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, this is one that I was just mentioning on the pre-show before Daisuke was here. And that is the fact that Arbelos is, uh, they just announced their newest title and that is life is cheap, but toilet, toilet paper is expensive. This is a Wayne Wang film from 1989. And this was super rare to be able to see. So I think yeah. this is one that is 
fairly important to support. This is available to pre-order on their site now, and it does come, like I just showed, it comes in one of these magnificent and envelope-style slipcovers if you order direct from them. And uh, it's going to come with this fancy little money bag with a fake $100 bill and everything. Wow. This is amazing. Oh, I'm a big fan of Wayne Wang. I've never been able to see this. Yeah. Oh, this is such this is so Arbolo. So I've never ordered directly from them either because again I just moved to the United States. So uh, yeah. I know their uh, their work and their releases uh very impressive lineup thus far. This is in, this is really incredible news. Wow. Yeah, th this is one they've been working on for a, a very long time from what I hear like at least a couple of years. Wow. That's am and and I'm sorry again. I'm uh I'm showing my my lack of expertise here, but uh, again, not having ever ordered from Arbolos directly because of my living situation up to a few yeah. months ago. So what other, what, what kinds of, you mentioned an envelope is there? What's yeah, it, it is an envelope style slip cover. So it literally opens like an envelope. All of their limited editions have this. Very and nice. when you buy it direct, you get one. If you buy it anywhere, anywhere else, it will not have that. And uh, this one is going to have, it's a brand new 4K restoration. Uh, the Lightbox Film Center is the one that did the restoration in uh, Philly, I believe. Uh, and they, they did that in collaboration with UC Berkeley. And there's a new uh, video interview on this with Wayne Wang. There's a new uh, video interview with this with Wayne Wang and the co-writer and co-director Spencer Nakasako. And you got the theatrical trailer. There's a new essay by Elisa Ma. All around, I mean, this is an astonishing release for a film that people have not been able to see ever. Wow, this is great news. Wayne Wang's films have been getting a lot of recent uh, uh, attention or, or yeah. re-attention of late. Uh, and this is continuing the trend, it looks like, in a very spectacular way. Oh, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, th this one's a big deal, especially. And Criterion's been showing him, him, him some love, so that's exciting. Yeah. Wow. Antonio uh, says, thanks for the heads up on Arblos. Never heard of them. Arblos has been around for, oh gosh, I'm going to say about five years. And uh, Craig from Deaf Crocodile and Dennis yeah. from Deaf Crocodile used to be a part of Arblos. And now the gentlemen that own Arblos are also the gentlemen that run Canadian International Pictures, the OCN partner label. And the the two individuals there work their butt off to make these great releases so it, this is one, if you are in any way interested in the films of Wayne Wang, I would jump on this soon. Uh, next up, the classic show, Leave It to Beaver, is getting a full Blu-ray release on November 14th. Not many details available on this yet, but that is honestly very surprising to me that they put the, the, the amount of money and attention into this to get leave it to beaver on blu-ray have you watched many of these these classic tv shows dice kid um i've seen uh i've seen my share of leave it to beaver yes um uh yeah i am i i wouldn't again the same thing i wouldn't call myself an expert but i enjoy them very much so uh, but uh yeah to get news like this is very very uh uh yeah very exciting although again so much to to draw from the well of yeah. uh, of great TV shows, if they can get things like Leave It to Beaver, that's great. I mean, this is a kind of a classic. Oh yeah, uh, a series in a lot of ways. So, um, oh, this is uh, this is great. Again, I don't know uh, the 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 history of the series very well, but yeah, I have seen my share of episodes. So, very funny. Yeah, yeah, this is foundational for many people. So, hopefully, it does well. Uh, they also announced, and and these are both coming from Universal. Uh, this is coming on November fourteenth as well. The Expanse, which is a modern sci fi film. I have not seen any of this, but I've heard that it's really great. And the the only thing that might be frustrating if you're a fan of the show is that they were selling the seasons singly as they came out. And I believe the last two seasons were never released singly. So if you bought the first three or four seasons, you've got those. And now you don't have a way to finish the, the series unless you buy this full package, which oh. would mean you'd be doubling up on those first few. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it? Isn't it great when uh, when re releases happen like that? Yeah. 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 Oh gosh. Yeah. If only they I don't know the attention. series uh, uh, directly myself either, but yeah, I, I've heard this is decent. I, I would like to at least check out a couple episodes. 
Uh, then, Terrorvision made a grand re-entry into some announcements, and we have a glut of items to talk about from them. The first one, we had this title announced previously, so I think most of these were announced previously, so we're just going to go through some of the details. This one's going to have a new commentary on it. Justin Beam is the one moderating uh, with Ray DeZazo. There's an interview with DeZazo, interview with Addison Randall, and uh, once again, they went and did a shock tale hour with the horror host Aurora Gorealis. Uh, giving us Hollowgate, and it sounds and looks like a pretty incredible release. Uh, Terrorvision, have you, have you dabbled into them at all yet? No. Terrorvision is a very interesting, interesting company. They, they've only been on uh, only been on the scene for a couple short years, but the releases they are putting out are, are fun. A lot of them low budget. A lot of them are, are ones from people's childhood, and uh, mm. very curious to see how many people are going to jump on these. Uh, Josephine says hello, and uh, Michael Smith has a question. Dice, okay, I know you have all the criterions. I was wondering how many have you seen? Do you keep track of all of those? Oh, you mean uh, the the films in the physical media catalog? So yes, as of now, I think I've seen all of them. Um, what are the the recent ones? I, I don't know what I, I haven't gotten the recent, really, really recent ones yet. So right. Well, we're going to be talking about Criterion in just a minute anyway, so that's exciting. Uh, the next one from Terrorvision was Wood Chipper Massacre. This is from 1988. This is going to have a commentary and a whole bunch of interviews. This looks like a solid release, but also they're not even done yet. They're, they're saying there's more extras that they're going to be working on for this. All of these you can pre-order now, and it should be shipping in late November. So that I've never is... seen Wood Chipper Massacre. Ne neither have I, and it seems like many people have not. Okay. Uh, next up is Blood Car. This is from 2007. Uh, wild cover on this one. This one's going to have a commentary with the cast and crew, commentary with film scholar Dr. Rutherford Thorpe. There's a behind the scenes of Blood Car, and uh, the last, last, and tribulations of Johnny Bush is what it was called. Uh, not sure on this one. I've not heard many who had mentioned it, but. Anna Klumsky's in this, the individual from My Girl and Veep. So oh, cool. That, that might wow. be enough to draw some people in. Wow, that's right. Oh, wow. Well, and, I'm, and... I'm intrigued. See, I didn't, I didn't know anything about Blood Car. And <laughs> I was just thinking, my goodness, this cover is intriguing. You know, the blood is yeah. all over the place, but the, the, there's, there, the face is, uh, <laughs> is noticeably free from any blood splatter. So I was thinking about that, but then you mentioned the, this micro, oh, wow, interesting. I'm, I'm, I am intrigued. Yes. I Consider am me, to, uh, yes, intrigued by this. Wow. I, I don't know this film either, so. Daisuke showing up on my channel is going to get Daisuke interested in super low budget horror. <laughs> well done. This is great. Uh, next up is Dead Air. This is a film with Bill Mosley in it. Uh, obviously, he's the individual from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and yep. Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. This one is going to have a commentary with Corbin Burnson, uh, Anatomy of a Shot featurette, Fly in the Wall featurette, some behind the scenes. Uh, but this one sounds really good, and this one had not been announced previously. This one's from 2009, and uh, it's about a DJ played by Bill Mosley. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be pretty, pretty dang fun. Again, some not, another film I don't know. This is uh, very sounds like a very interesting label already. I'm very intrigued. Yeah, and they are uh, they're about to get really broad. Like they announced that they are putting out the old silent film Inferno from uh, uh, I think it's 1918 or 1919, and so they are going to be doing a, a lot of interesting stuff compared to what they have been doing. Oh wow! Next, How, what's up, the price point like? Did, did uh, they are they are very very uh very competitive i would say all of their blu-rays are no higher than 24.99 and they do dabble in 4k and none of those are higher than 29.99 so okay. overall i mean that's that's pretty good and then every once in a while they, they they've dropped a couple titles down for sale for somewhere around like 20 to 22 dollars good that's good yeah. not too bad and they 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 offer a, a pretty interesting subscription service where you can choose to go 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 titles from them and get a, a much higher discount. Uh, next up from them is one that they've been talking about for a while now, and that's The Jar from 1984. This one got an extensive restoration that they just showed at Fantastic Fest and supposedly did very well. 
Uh, this is going to have a couple different commentaries on here and a handful of interviews and even more extras coming soon. This is one that a lot of people have been asking about, so I'm sure this one is going to do pretty well. Oh, very cool. Uh, next up from them is the Japanese film Door from 1988. And uh, this one, I just wanted to remind everybody, is getting another release from Third Window Films in the UK very soon. Or just did. Have yeah. you seen this one? Yeah, I know this. Yeah, I don't know anything about uh, outside of Japan releases, though. So, oh, this is uh, oh, wh this is very interesting. Yeah. Have you seen this film yet? I've not because I'm waiting on this release. To, oh, of to course. Be able to yes. What am I saying? Yeah. Yes, yes. Of course. Of course. Uh, Third Window Films. Do you know them? Uh, yes. They're out of the UK. So they just released a double feature of Door and its sequel, Door Two. Ah. And yeah. the only okay. the only thing I will say is that double feature is on a 25 gig Blu-ray disc, so it might be slightly compressed to this one. Okay. Uh, this one's going to have a lot more features than that other one as well. Okay. So this might be the place to go. In it, in, unless you really want that that sequel as well but honestly it sounds yeah. like you you might just want to pick up both this not not to pressure anybody but like to have the best <laughs> of every world that that sounds like it would be the way to go oh, that's great you know i don't have uh, i don't have the i don't go into the third window uh, title ver uh, catalog very much because i i usually have a reliance on japanese releases generally but right. uh, i think what they're I, I know their catalog, generally speaking, and it's it's really quite wonderful. Especially, you know, a lot of these films you can't get outside of Japan. It's true. Uh, without uh, you know, the Japanese releases don't have English subtitles. They're really really expensive, and uh, sometimes it's cost prohibitive to get them shipped from Japan to wherever place. And so yeah, so places like uh, uh, this and yeah, well done. Oh, I'm I'm very impressed. And third window, one of the other things that is honestly even more impressive is that they're all ran by one individual. Adam at Third Window Films does everything from designing the cover art to getting uh, interviews scheduled with directors to doing commentaries. He is a, a machine over there. Uh, next up from Terravision is one that they're going to have two different cover art options for, and that is the film Slashers. Uh, this is a, a, a serial killer movie about a Japanese game show. And mm -hmm. this sounds fantastic. This one says, yeah. Slashers is a hit Japanese game show where contestants win millions of dollars if they can survive the unthinkable. A group of Americans step up to the challenge and into the labyrinthian set where three masked maniacs will stop at nothing to ensure the participants pay the ultimate price in their pursuit of the prize. Let the gory games begin. Yes, I'm. This is. This sounds really cool indeed. I don't know this at all, so this sounds very cool. Uh, this is directed by Maurice Devereaux, who also did the film End of the Line, which a lot of people got from Terravision and seemed to like. There's going to be a commentary with the director, some interviews, some extended and deleted scenes. And again, even more extras that they're working on for this. This sounds like a solid, solid release. Oh, wow. Uh, they also released some VHSs. Uh, Srigala from Indonesia, Woodchipper Massacre are both available now on VHS. And then they announced some LPs. They put out the Marshmallow Ghosts. And then the big one uh, after these cassettes Friday the 13th, part two, three, and one, and uh, Monster Squad were all released on cassette. And then this big Monster Squad vinyl set that they just released looks very compelling. No kidding. Oh, because I'm going to have the Monster Squad song in my head now. <laughs> oh, that's great. The Monster Squad. Oh, this is so cool. Yes, yes, cassette cassette tape. So I, may, may, I don't know. I, I'm old enough to remember cassette tapes. Same. I, I so so uh, th this thing always uh, tugs at the heartstrings. I think very very uh, with a great sense of fondness and and uh, uh, sort of euphoria and nostalgia. So uh, this is uh, very cool indeed. But uh, yeah, oh, this is really great. I don't know. Is this are these more collectibles rather than the uh, actual actually playing or 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 how, how does it work in 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 sort of today's marketplace you know for the cassette tapes for example uh, a lot of people actually do play them uh surprisingly oh, it is uh, a lot of people love that scratchy it's like a nostalgic look back on the way they used to listen to music and yeah. 
Yeah. Do you remember that feeling you get when you wanted to play one side and you realize it, it wasn't rewound? Oh my goodness. Yep. You have to wait until, oh, and then sometimes it was battery powered. It Trying to find that exact slower. perfect spot, rewinding yeah. 38 <laughs> times. Oh, um, my big days. thing, I, I had a big nostalgia moment because just this week, uh, and this is funny because it's close to me. I showed my kids Monster Squad for the first time. Uh, we watched it all as a family together. And man, it is just the greatest experience to start to share films with your kids. I love it so much. You know, that's a really good point. You know, I, I never thought, but that is, I think, a good entry point into the world of the monster world, but done in a type of uh, sort of thrilling way that's still, I think, uh, uh, not o- totally. Uh, how to say it's it's still a sort of maybe age appropriate level in, in a manner of speaking. Oh, that's a really good point. I should I should think about that when showing movies to my kids. It it is decent. I will say there's a lot more slurs than I remember there being in that. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, that's a good point. Okay, I should yeah. keep that in mind as well. It, it's a quite a homophobic movie at the beginning. I totally forgot uh, about yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Okay. So yeah, uh, well, something to think about. But yeah, that that's a that's a good point. But still, yeah, I I, I take your points very well. Yeah. Uh, next up from them, uh, for slashers, they're also doing some merch. If you're into it, they've got a couple mm-hmm. different shirts you can buy. Um, either way, I just really wanted to shout out Terravision because I know some people were not, uh, really keen on them for a while, but some of the titles they're announcing, it is really, really exciting, uh, lately. Um, you know, we have a good question for you, Daisuke. Do you know what region code Japanese releases usually fall under? I think they're still region A, right? Oh, for Blu-rays? Yes. yes. Uh, so Region A, and then for DVDs, it's uh, whatever it is, Zone Zone B, I think. <laughs> so it, the, the region is the same for Blu-rays as in North America, but the zones for DVDs are different. Yeah, I think the DVD zones were, I think there was like eight or nine of them across the world. It was wild times. Wild yeah. times. Uh, okay, so here's Terry. Terry says the Terravision vinyl is quite good. The, the bundle is tempting. Terry is one that still listens to vinyl every single day. So, uh, yes, he, a lot of a lot of these people are buying these to actually listen to. I promise. Uh, uh, next up is Severin Films. They announced that on December twelfth, you can get this in a wide release, or they will ship it in mid to late November straight to you if you order from their website. Uh, there is a bundle here called Danza Macabra Volume Two: The Italian Gothic Collection. And this is going to be a mix. Castle of Blood in this is going to be 4K, and everything else is going to be Blu-ray. The Castle of Blood release is three discs all together. One of them is the 4K of the film and special features. One is the Blu-ray and special features. And then the third disc is all special features. They went all in on Castle of Blood. It is overloaded. Uh, th- this looks like such a compelling release. Um, then we have Jekyll from 1969, and uh, this is going to be a set of two different discs for Jekyll, and they've got some special features on this. They got some interviews with some actors, some set designers, a video essay by Joseph Dwyer, and then the sixth disc in this is They Have Changed Their Face from 1971, and this is going to have an audio commentary. Uh, with the director and then another audio commentary by Kat Ellinger and then an interview with the film critic Alberto Farina who is the son of the director and then uh, an interview with the actor on this some outtakes some short films there's just a lot going into this release and that's not even the last disc the last one is The Devil's Lover from 1972 this one has an audio commentary a video essay by Alexandra Heller Nicholas and then an interview with the actor Robert Woods and if that's not enough They're also including an eighth disc, the soundtrack for The Devil's Lover on CD. Yeah, I I need to get this. I don't know how you feel, but yeah, I need to get this. I haven't uh, pre-ordered it yet. Actually, I've been meaning meaning to get around to this. I heard about this. So, Did you happen to get the first box they did like this? Yes. Uh, Have you watched it? Did you enjoy it? I did very much so. I haven't spoken about it on my channel or anything. I mean, I I don't, uh, I wish I could. It's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, impressed with it. So I'm, I, when I heard this news, uh, I was, uh, uh, I I think I'm going to get, I don't know exactly. Again, uh, how am I going to afford it again? Life (laughs) finds a way. So there is, I'm, I'm very excited for this. There is something special about this set and the first set. They are, 
they are specially curated. It, you can tell that mm. a lot of love and thoughtful, very specific consideration to the titles and yeah. to the fe features that are on these. It, it, you can just tell that they worked a lot on this. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Ken says, I want Castle of Blood on 4K so bad. It looks like I'll have to wait a year or more for standard. If they even had, if they put one out, who knows? Oh, that's a good point, right? Because that's, that's, it's nothing has been announced in terms of a potential standalone, nope. right? Okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that first one, uh, I think yeah. that came out early this year. And yeah, we, we still haven't heard anything about standard releases for that one. Okay. Uh, have a good night, Nathan. Uh, I'm sure you're going to watch tomorrow. Oh, Nathan Jones. Hello. Yeah. Uh, next up is, uh, this is another one from that Kino cult line we were talking about. Underworld by the one and only Clive Barker is coming oh, cool. on 4K in Blu-ray. Oh, cool. And uh, wow. this is going to have a new audio commentary by the director, George Pavlo, directed by, uh, moderated by Stephen Thrower, the author of Nightmare USA, of course. And uh, you've got uh, the commentary on the Blu-ray disc and the 4K disc. And this one has been teased for a while, so I'm glad this is finally coming. This is going to be here on December 19th. 19th and this will be number uh five in that kino cult line oh very cool thank you I, again i'm 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 becoming more and more of a uh yeah I, i'm gonna have to make some moves with the kino cult line here oh, <laughs> and okay okay number yeah, five is... okay so it's spy numbered as well oh my goodness they are uh. spy numbered uh, this is the same line where they announced just a couple months ago that they were releasing the uh ilsa films next year on 4k oh, cool. Cool. All okay. four of those are going to be a part of the Kino cult line as well. Okay. Uh, next up, Kino Lorber also announced Scarlet Street from 1945 with Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett. This is a Fritz Lang film. And uh, again, uh, this is not final artwork, but I'm sure it'll look something like this on the front. And uh, no new features from what it seems like, unless they announce okay. something later. But it's going to have a brand new restoration from a 16-bit 4K scan of the 35 millimeter nitrate composite, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm sure this is going to look just amazing. Oh, I'm going to have to get this one as well. I, I apologize in advance for your bank account. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No. <laughs> Uh, next up, they also announced a 4K release of Fear and Desire, the Kubrick film. Uh, no, no release date on this one yet, but it will have a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 4K scan of the OCN. Yeah. This is an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I heard about this as well. I was, uh, I was uh, intrigued and then... It's it's one of those it's it's a very very interesting peculiar film. I don't know have, have you seen this one? A long time ago. Uh, yeah. I, I probably should watch it again, but it's not one I have an, an immediate desire to jump back into. Yes. Do you have uh, you know you, you mentioned you don't have desire necessarily? Do you have fear? <laughs> I, uh, I, anyway, I am so... a, I am afraid that I would I tend to hate it. I think if I watch it again, <laughs> it's it's an interesting one in the in the Cooper catalog. That's for sure. Yeah. But I, who knows? Maybe it's this type of of. Uh, 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 high marquee release, you know, the 4K treatment, uh, yeah. I think is, uh, is, is definitely going to uh, give it some, uh, maybe uh, some fireworks. Uh, that's for sure. And, you know, it's had some pretty decent releases before, but uh, uh, those have been, I think, several years uh, have passed since those releases. So correct. Um, it'll be nice to see this. And of course, you know, it's always nice to get the, the, the full treatment of the Stanley Cooper catalog. Uh, using the most recent technology, so and it's and, it's a very intriguing film. It has it has uh, interesting usages of uh, of uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know actors playing different roles and and the the, the allegory of war and and uh, the use of sound and, and nature, etc. So so it'll be interesting. What to go. I, I might actually get this uh, when it comes time to to uh, make my purchase again. Um, my wallet might not be so pleased, but. Well, oh, well. I, I, I may have buried the lead slightly. I'm not sure if you heard the, the extra special part of this, is that this special edition will include both cuts of Fear and Desire and the Kubrick short films, Flying Padre from 1951, Day okay. of the Fight from 1951, and The Seafarers from 1953, all newly restored in 4K and okay. for the first time in HDR and Dolby Vision. I mean, that's that's incredibly intriguing. Yes, 
Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, very, very cool indeed. Hmm. Solid sounding release from them. Uh, very curious to see when that comes out. Uh, now, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because, man, I've not heard so many controversial takes on this film. December 5th, we finally got confirmation Paramount is releasing Titanic on 4K. This is, of course, the Jim Cameron joint from 1997. It's going to have over 15 hours of special features, including uh, a new featurette called Titanic Stories from the Heart with the director, producer, and Kate Winslet going through memories and favorite moments of the making of the film. Uh, a new Looking Back segment called Titanic 25 Years Later with James Cameron, uh, looking back on how it was made, and then new fan poster art and 15 hours. There's got to be a lot there, but Titanic. How do you feel about Titanic? Oh, Titanic. Yeah, I saw it in the theaters uh, when it was first released. So, uh, you know, I was there during the whole... Uh, phenomenon that was Titanic, which is a kind of a slow burn, actually. It, it, yeah. it, 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 James Cameron's films, I think, have this great way of, of doing that. Uh, and, and I don't know, it, it's that magic touch, and it was definitely there with Titanic. And I would say, too, even prior to that with films like, um, uh, like uh, you know, even like T2, uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So, uh, but yeah, that was, it was, it was a big deal. It was a really big deal to see it in the theater as well. So, um, and so, uh, you know, I, I had a, a thing about this. I'd made to mention this uh, on the channel uh, once, but I, when I watched it in the, what was that, the late 90s, I was so adamant on when I sat down in the theater to start the film, I would not get up to leave until <laughs> the fin film was over, including the end credits. And so I was so strict about this. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was during the course of the film, um, I maybe I was drinking a lot of fluids prior to the start. Um, and then uh, during the course, I suddenly felt the, you know, nature was calling. So I felt the urge to visit the, uh, visit the restroom, but I thought, Oh no, no, I can, I can wait. I it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, it, it, it's a wait till the films end. Well, you think about how long the film is. And then this was just around the time when the, 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 the Titanic action was about to hit. And so, in the second half, while I'm still feeling this urge to to visit the restroom, but but adamantly just uh, defying such such call of nature, I was uh, watching on screen all this rushing water and breaking of walls and, and flowing and dripping and all this stuff, and it was really quite an ordeal, a physical ordeal. Uh, and uh, when the cre end credits came, I was just rushing out. Yes, I had to get out to the uh, the movie theater restroom. And uh, yes, it was uh, it was quite an ordeal indeed. So a physical ordeal, but all all in the name of movie movie love. Yeah. So that's my Titanic uh, cinema adventure story. Adventure. I have, it's my Titanic, I've been Titanic story. Yes. I've been shocked hearing how many people this week have said that this is an awful movie, and I just can't fathom thinking that about this movie. This movie is so incredible. You know, it had that uh, it, it had that effect on especially that generation of being. It, I mean, I, I remember people like you know the, the film critics um, uh, talking about it being like a huge screen epic. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's the the screen epics really. The, the there is a, a a type of spectacle about it, which is part of the, for lack of a better phrase, genre. And I think this film Titanic uh, really capitalizes on those. Uh, uh, sort of, uh, genre parameters are really quite splendidly. Uh, really, I mean, I, and you know, when I first saw it, I think as a maybe I didn't take so so much to the the romance or the love story. But as I get older, it, that really gets to me. You know, yeah. it really, I really become quite quite emotionally involved to, with that. And there's something about watching a film as time passes and and the years progress as you get older. I think uh, something about Titanic, especially the love story. I think does that for me more, much more so than when I first saw it as whenever it was as a, maybe a, a, a late teenager or the what, or, or whatever it must've been in the late nineties for me. That makes sense. Uh, I'm just hoping the quality on the 4k is great. We, we shall see. Yeah. Well, it is time, my friend, some criterion announcements. Uh, these are all coming in January and I I'm pleasantly surprised. Many of these are coming on 4k and uh, let's get right into it. The first 
January 2nd, we are getting the Apu Trilogy on 4K. This is from 1955, 56, and 59. It looks like all the same special features to me. Uh, why don't you give a, a quick rundown of why this is exciting? Oh, yeah. So start the year with a set of films. It is a re-release, but to start the year with a set of films that is so uh, un that, that are so undeniably almost <laughs> ingrained into the very fabric of cinema uh, as the films com uh, that comprise the so-called uh, Apu trilogy, such yeah. as Rai. Um, uh, this is uh, truly amazing. Now, of course, there's going to be a question, which is a very fair one, as to what the what what will make the uh, the 4K viewing experience stand out from the already quite strong Blu-ray experience. But again, yes. uh, that that's always been the the discussion, I think, with Criterion releases. Um, my understanding is, as you say, we're not talking. Um, I mean, we're we're talking essentially about a re-release of a currently existing. Uh, item okay. except employing the 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 different technologies so uh, we're gonna have to wait and see about that but regardless of uh, at the end of the day what that discussion point is uh, the the films as they stand already in the criterion collection as they look and sound i mean th it was a miracle that they were able to have been survived in that kind of uh, uh, condition let alone being released like this uh some years back and so if that's a, a continuation or, or or reminding of that legacy with this new release for the the new year then yeah it's uh, as i mentioned before it's a, a huge call cause for celebration and it's also a great uh, great opportunity for anyone who has not yet seen these films um yeah these are these are um how should i put it um they are really tender and magical and um, bittersweet, and uh, they are intimate. There's a sweep of history about them, but there's also this intimate emotional family tale uh, that is uh, just uh, uh, so endearing. So uh, this is great, great way to start the year. It really is. Uh, we had a question here from Daniel. He says, if you grab the 4K of a Criterion release, and it's the same everything in the release, like a lot of their 4Ks have been, do you yeah. get rid of the, the previous Blu-ray release, or do you keep all of them to keep the collection complete? Oh, that's a good question. Um, and uh, at the moment, I keep the Blu-ray. Uh, not for any any other reason except I just, just keep it. So, yeah. um, but uh, sometimes there might be a, a difference in say the packaging used. Like I can say, for instance, the, what was it? The night of the living dead release, the one that I got the, what was it? The, the original Blu-ray release was the digipack, which I yep. really like, but then the 4k release was the plastic uh, casing with the, the, the stacked uh, yep. uh, kind of compartment system. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I usually, I, I don't know. I, I don't get around to, um, uh, well, I usually keep the Blu-ray anyway, but just, uh, yeah, for no particular reason, except just to have it, I suppose. Right. Uh, let's see what the next one is. Cause man, I, I'm sure we're going to get to it after we cover the last one, but I feel like January is one of the most impressive yeah. months from them in a long time. Uh, the next one, January 9th, they're putting out blood simple on 4k. This is the Coen brothers film. And uh, this, uh, honestly, I, I'm I'm generally not super super excited about the re-releases, but I adore the Coen Brothers, and this film specifically is just a, an immense immense start to a career that is going to be magical over the next however many decades. And uh, Blood Simple, I, I'd love to hear what you think on it. Oh, I think it's uh, I I agree. It has this weird way of creeping up on you when you first yeah. watch it. You know, it, it goes in these these ways that you don't quite expect. Not like super super twists, but you know these these quirky idiosyncratic ways in which the plot twists and turns, especially in an early uh, 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 Joel and Ethan Cohen film like Blood Simple. Obviously, early in terms of the the start to yeah. their filmography, essentially in terms of uh, of. Uh, uh, director producer output in the feature film uh, narrative sense but it's this is a uh, yeah i i agree with you i really in, enjoy this so i think it's it's i whenever i see it i'm always surprised at how scary it is i always forget how scary the film is but then i when i watch it i realize oh it's 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 really funny and weird but it's also very very scary and i think that's uh yeah coen brothers films do that uh, really really well and they do it even uh, in the latter part of their uh, their filmography but it, you see it here 
in yeah. one simple done so cleverly and and also just the way in which it's everything feels so handmade uh there is an earnest quality to it, which i always find uh incredibly charming and uh, uh i have nothing but the utmost respect for that the the fear that you mentioned there i think the cohen brothers have a knack for tension they, they yeah. build tension in in ways that many filmmakers just can't quite grasp and the way that they meld the the scripting with the music into the the way that they navigate through a scene it, it is just done so complimentary to each other that it makes some of these scenes immaculately ten tense that you you would not really expect to be feeling tension in that's right yeah well said uh next one is one that so many people are excited about lone star from 1996 directed by john sales is coming on 4k and blu-ray on january 16th this is going to have a new 4K digital restoration supervised by the director. It's going to have a 4K disc of the film with Dolby Vision, HDR, and a Blu-ray of the film with special features. There's a new conversation on here between John Sales and the filmmaker Gregory Nava. New interview with Dryberg, and then a trailer and an essay by scholar Domino Rene Perez. Uh, I have never seen Lone Star, but I'm dying to see it. Have you seen Lone Star? Yes. Sell me on it, my friend. Why should I buy this immediately? Um, January 2024's uh, Criterion Release Month, I think, is very stellar. And there are a number of titles that we, I think we're going to talk about in a couple moments here. But if, and I, and there are some that really are tempting me to, to have them be like my, and I don't usually do this, my favorite or the one that I'm looking forward right. to the most, because they're all really great. And we'll talk about some others in a moment. But, oh, my goodness. If I had to choose one out of the bunch of January releases, and they're all great, but I have to—if I had to choose one, I'd have to go with Lone Star. Wow. This one, I—I—I I, I heard something about something might happen uh, from Criterion with this John Sales work. I—I I heard, but again, I'm not privy to the insider knowledge. I just hear what what people maybe tell me in passing or something right. like that but i don't have the insider information but i did hear a little bit about the possibility i was like oh maybe today this month will be the month lone star will come but it never came until now and uh the reason why i'm well there's so many reasons but let's say the primary reason i'm so excited about this is that it is such a good story it or a series of stories it's interweaving space and time generations mystery and uh uh, uh police procedural and uh, secrets and um uh family secrets and uh sort of hidden secrets almost and the micro and macro level and uh when things become unearthed as you know they must in a film like this the tension and sparks that fly and the way that things might or might not resolve themselves. Oh, this is a, a, an amazing, uh, amazing feat. I mean, John Sales is one of those, those artists, just uh, uh, one of a kind. And I would say for me, Lone Star is among my favorite of John Sales' works. Uh, and so, yes, uh, I, I <laughs> will see what this uh, restoration look uh, has in store for us. But um this has been something that I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I've had it on a DVD uh, and I saw it on VHS rental as well. But wow. uh, now to have this news very close to us, only a few months from now. Uh, yeah. If I had to pick one out of the bunch, again, it's a really, really strong sterling month. It might be this one for me. It, it is a strong month. And one of the reasons it's so strong is because of this. January 23rd, Criterion yeah. is releasing a Blu-ray box set of Chantelle Ackerman's uh, masterpieces. And it's from 1968 to 78. They've got everything that you would think to see in here. Um, there's there's so much in here that I couldn't even list everything in this post. So if you are even close to considering this, which you absolutely should be, uh, I would go read everything that's going to be in this because this set, this set looks intimidating uh, in scope. It looks... <laughs> yeah. Uh, magnificent in the fact that they grasped all of it together into one piece, uh, which is, I think, a bit of a surprise for a lot of people. I don't think this was necessarily something that people had on their Criterion bingo cards, uh, but it's it's great, especially to see 
right after the sight and sound poll and uh, give give some more respect to her name. Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, so a number of things here, which is, as you rightly mentioned, yes, uh, Chantal Ackerman, uh, a lot of uh, Chantal Ackerman's works are going to be included here, M many of which were, were released by Criterion in past releases. Uh, give a quick shout out to the great DVD line, the Eclipse series, yep. which had a number of these films already on the DVD format. But now we have it here in this, uh, in this uh, different format. And we have, and this was brought to my attention uh, from a, a friend and viewer of my own channel, uh, which is, in many ways, this is like a a, a type of uh, reworking of an Eclipse set. Yeah, uh, it, It's not under the Eclipse name, but uh, we have that, plus a number of things that I think were not made available in any Criterion release uh, thus far. Many of them were, but, but, but some aren't. But I should say the, for many perhaps, which is uh, the one that, again, has also had a Criterion release, uh, uh, Jean Dielman. Yeah, uh, Antoine de Commerce, right? Mille quatre vingt Bruxelles. That's also part of this set. So, as you mentioned, yes, uh, a lot of attention given to that work, especially uh, with the uh, Sight and Sounds' uh, most recent uh, uh, critics poll. So, uh, yes, uh, what is it? It's three discs, a three disc Blu-ray set, I think. Yes. yes. So, uh, I think it's going to be one of those where I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to be like a huge box thing. But it'll be one of these, uh, uh, maybe uh, in terms of size and dimension, uh, something that we've seen with other similarly situated releases. But um, uh, three discs with all these films. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sold. Yeah. Yeah, this is a big deal, especially if you don't have uh, Jean Dielman already or, or if you're, you know, trying to get uh, a lot of this just grouped together. This is this is pretty astonishing. So I, I'm excited to see this. Um Let's see. From the website, it isn't obvious if they ported over from Jean Dumont. Do we know if they did? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not entirely sure. Let's go to the next one. Uh, next one is Mudbound. This is coming on Blu ray on January 30th. Uh, heck of a cast here. Carrie Mulligan, Jason Clark, Jason Mitchell, Mary J. Blige, Rob Morgan, Jonathan Bakes, Garrett Hudland. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about this film. Set in the 1940s, this is going to be a new 2K master, new audio commentary featuring the director, new documentary featuring the director, the composer, the editor, makeup artist. Uh, another documentary that was made on set featuring members of the cast and crew. Interview with Morrison, interview with the production designer, an essay by Danielle Amir Jackson. There's a lot going into this, and this looks like a, just a great release. Yes, uh, uh, D. Reese. Yes, um, the uh, Criterion, I think, uh, a year or so back, released another D. Reese film, which is called Pariah. And when you listen to some of the supplements on Pariah, you you could see some of the mentionings uh, to other works, including Mudbound, and so. Uh, one got to thinking it oh is criterion thinking about releasing this as well and so a number maybe some time has passed since the release of that earlier uh d reese film but now lo and behold look what we have right this is um uh, um uh you know i i i was able to catch up with this one uh, not the criterion release that's because that's forthcoming but oh this is yeah you're right this is another magnificent work very challenging very very uh yes uh, very overwhelming so it's good to, to have this another yes contribution to why this month of january is very strong from criterion this is a great film i think and and as if it wasn't strong enough yet they also announced train spotting on 4k yes. and blu-ray coming to the criterion collection a a wonderful film from 96 that is just very welcome in the in the collection and if you've never seen it this is essential viewing. Uh, it, it's a magnificent film. It should be seen to be appreciated and believed. It is going to have Dolby Vision. Uh, we yeah. have an audio commentary featuring Danny Boyle, the director, uh, producer, screenwriter, and uh, Ewan McGregor's on it. There are nine deleted scenes. There's a documentary from 2008. Uh, there's an essay, a couple essays by the critic Graham Fuller and the author Irvine Welsh. 
uh, Welsh's glossary of terms from the film and book and glow in the dark packaging. This looks like a really fun and, and pretty exciting release from them. Yeah. And also uh, it's, it's uh, I'm glad that you read off those uh, the, the list of supplements and, and extra little goodies uh, from a physical media perspective, because this was a really big deal. Uh, this is a really big deal for a number of reasons. First, the film is, as you say, mind blowing. It, yeah. It's really intense. It's it's quite uh, quite intense indeed in a lot of places. It goes in pretty dark avenues, you know, because of certain aspects of the subject matter, as you know. Uh, and it's also, it also has a, that sense of also being quite edgy, which I think is uh, very apropos, especially from the, that era of films. And I think it, it's aged really well. I don't know about you. But I think it's it feels very fresh. So yeah. Uh, but also in, in Criterion land, it, it used to be back in the day, it used to be a Criterion Laserdisc and a pretty good one. Yeah. And even the Laserdisc had a, a little piece of paper that was like a glossary of terms. And so I think Criterion seems to be trying to carry on or reminding us of that little tradition that they had uh, with uh, that little goodie for their Criterion Laserdisc. So it seems like maybe they're they're planning a little bit of, of that type of thing. So maybe they, they have that in mind. In any event, I'm always thrilled to whenever Criterion announces a title that used to be a, a Laserdisc because uh, it's it's a reminder of how really uh, wild and fantastic the Laserdisc catalog was. So And th this was one of their titles, and now it's coming to the physical media collection now. So it's wonderful. It's especially exciting when it had a laser disc, but nothing in between laser disc and 4K. I mean, to make that sort of a leap, um, just in the collection, obviously, because it had a Blu-ray release elsewhere. But to make yeah. that leap in the collection, that is exciting, and it's it's nice to see them still respecting the same film that they did back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that is Criterion for the month. Before we go to the rest of the announcements. Uh, just overall, since you're the Criterion man, uh, how do you feel about the the first month of the year and that entire package? Because to me, that uh, six full titles, one of them being a, an immense box set, that is a very strong start to the year for them. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, I think on this the strength on the films, the strength uh, the films alone, I think has already. I mean, they, they already got me. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm incredibly impressed. Um, and it, it's it, usually December is, is relatively speaking, it's considered to be quote unquote, a light month end quote. Yeah. Uh, and then January, November and January tend to be quote unquote, uh, the, the ones where they get a lot of attention, uh, from, uh, uh, critics and, and uh, uh, interested media persons and, and uh, fans of physical media and cinema alike. So it seems like uh, January 2024 is no, no exception to that. So you know, no I'm exception excited. at all. And even December really wasn't that quiet for them this time. No, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we are about halfway through the announcements for the week. Uh, next up, Mondo Macabro. They are doing their uh, flash pre-order for their Halloween bundle starting tomorrow morning. This is going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And this is the main title that you're going to want to hear about for this bundle. Because in this bundle, this 4K release is going to be exclusive to this pre-order bundle tomorrow. This cool. title will be available on Blu-ray when their sale starts on Halloween. But if you really want it on 4K, tomorrow is the only time to get this one on 4K. Uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Google it, find out whatever time it's going to be. There will be 750 copies of the bundle made available. Tomorrow, you can only buy the bundle. You, we're going to go through all of the titles tonight because they announced one every single day this week. But this one, uh, this is the main one that if you are wanting this in 4K, Tomorrow is the only time to get that because it'll probably sell out tomorrow. All 750 bundles will probably sell tomorrow. Wow. What, what's the price point on that? Do you know offhand? Yes. The bundle is going to be $132. Okay. And it's uh, honestly, it's not that bad of a price because uh, we're going to talk about all of them tonight. But uh, the, the amount of stuff that you're getting in this bundle right. is pretty impressive. So we will get into that. This one... Uh, this one looks special. Um, Death Squad from 1985. And uh, as they say here, 
It is quite possibly the sleaziest movie that they've ever released. And coming from Mondo Macabro, that means a lot because they've released some sleazy movies. And oh, if yeah. you watch, if you watch the trailer they released for this, it is not a joke. Uh, this is a sleazy looking movie, and I'm very eager to see it. Oh, I, I think you're right. I, I think it'll be sold out of quite quickly from yeah. the, the sound of things. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but, but anyway, yes, yes. I agree wholeheartedly with your assessment. So starting on Halloween, if you want this one, you can still get it, but it'll be on Blu-ray instead of 4K. So keep that okay. in mind. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, I love nature documentaries. And BBC is always some of the best out there. They are putting out Planet Earth 3 on 4K on uh, January 8th in the UK. It'll likely get a US release at some point, but these always look fantastic. These are always astounding. David Attenborough is just amazing on these, of course. How do you feel about these? Have you checked out any of the, the nature docs? Uh, not Planet Earth 3, no, but uh, generally speaking, yes, I, 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 I take to nature documentaries quite favorably. They they get some some shots from this that are just exceptional. Mm. I can't wait to check that one out. Uh, Music Box Films. This is a partner label of OCN, but this one is coming widely not through OCN. They are releasing Fremont from 2023. This will be available on November 14th on Blu-ray. And uh, it is shot in black and white and uh, supposed to be pretty dang good. I I don't so I don't know this work. So this is you say 2023 you said? Yep, brand new film. Uh I believe this just did festival circuits early this year or late last okay. year. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Music Box definitely takes a lot of films that are going on the the current uh circuits. So would not be surprised to hear that they just did that earlier. Uh next up is Mercy Road is coming on December 12th from WellGo USA. This has uh, Toby Jones. That's the only name that I recognize in this. Luke Bracey is the other name. Uh, I've never heard of this one or seen it, but it is coming December 12th. Oh, wow. Very interesting. I know Toby Jones, yes. but oh, okay. I am very curious about this one. Uh, December 19th, WellGo is releasing The Ghost Station from this year as well. And uh, this says, after a young reporter covers a suspicious accident... She learns from police that her source was supposedly already dead at the time of their interview. As more mysterious deaths occur, she and her partner dig deeper into the case and come face to face with the horrifying truth. And uh, the poster for this looks fantastic, like really intriguing artwork on that. Oh, what's the name of this again? Again, I, I, I apologize. I, I don't know this as well, but the, the, the hook is quite intriguing. The Ghost Station. The Ghost Station. Thank you. Yes. Very curious to check that one out. Uh, then November 21st, Draft House Films, a name that I've not heard for quite some time. They're releasing Mr. Organ from 2022. This is one they've been hyping up for quite some time. Do it again, doing festival appearances, uh, played Beyond Fest, Fantastic Fest. It's supposed to be all right, uh, but I, I do like the cover art on this. I, I'm, I'm curious to see this one. Hmm. I'm also curious if this will be a BDR or if it will be pressed because uh, Draft House, after they were absent for a few years, and I believe somebody bought them out, um, the last couple from them have been uh, burned discs rather than pressed. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, one of the horror masterpieces from the last decade, The Wailing from 2016, is getting a 4K release from WellGo USA. Uh, Dice Gabe, you've seen this one. I'm sure you have. No, I haven't. I no. people have told me about this. Yeah, this oh, this yes. is a I, I call it a folk horror movie. It, it's a pretty like a uh, pretty local tradition folk horror type movie, and it's it's pretty amazing. Hmm. This is one that if you've never seen it, I, I imagine this will look great in 4K because there's a lot of dark scenes. Okay. Oh, yes. I I have heard a, a number of people uh, mention this to you, recommend this to me. So. Yeah, it is absolutely worth your time. Yeah. Uh, next up, this is a classic. Uh, 2024, Discotech Media is releasing Belladonna of Sadness on 4K. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be the same uh, 4K transfer that Sinalicious did, uh, thanks to Craig, who's in the chat right now. Craig Rogers from Deaf Crocodile. 
they are doing a new HDR grade on it, and they say the colors are eyeball searing. Um, this is going to be a 4K and Blu-ray combo release, and uh, it's going to have better compression than releases done elsewhere, it says. An all-new historical commentary by Mike Toole, and uh, some new freshly proofed subtitles, and it has all the interviews and everything from the previous releases. I mean, th this sounds like a great release of a classic. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen this work? I have. Uh, it's been a couple years, but Belladonna is is beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, quite a uh, how should I put it? It's a quite a unique and unforgettable journey. Yeah, uh, very intense in a lot of places. But I'm intrigued with this uh, this phrase: the colors are eyeball searing. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. I, I've always, I don't know. I, I've never had my eyeballs seared. So I wonder how that will be. I'm, I'm, I, I actually heard about this on your Instagram account. Oh, interesting. So yeah, th this was one, uh, it, they, uh, discotheque, they, they tend to do discotheque days where they announce, uh, usually about three or four months with the titles that are coming out. And, okay. uh, this is one that it seemed to go into the radar a little bit, but obviously, this one needs to be shouted to the high heavens. I, I imagine this should be a great release. Yeah. Uh, 4K release of Varsity Blues from 1999 oh. is coming on January 9th. It'll be the 25th anniversary of this movie. Uh, no idea on features yet. Varsity Blues, uh, you're laughing. Yeah, I haven't. I, I saw this in the theater. I haven't seen this in, since I, I, I saw this. In the, my goodness, and now it's a 4K? Wow. That's amazing. That's really cool. 4K release of uh, wow. one of the, the quintessential uh, millennium <laughs> type uh, teen movies. For some reason, uh, this one was watched by a lot of people a little earlier than it probably should have been, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, James Vanderbeek, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right at the peak of his uh, That's right. popularity. Yes, yes. What is it? What? Well, yeah. The, uh, yeah. 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 James Vanderbilt. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a really interesting period. Yeah. The, the, the nineties, right? The late nineties into the 99, 99. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th this is one that was uh very wonderfully parodied in not another teen movie quite a few times. And, uh, <laughs> but by, for a good reason, this is a, a pretty well-made movie. I think so too. <laughs> Craig says it was his Vander peak. Uh, that's a pretty good pun. <laughs> uh, next up, Diabolic DVD is currently running a pretty fantastic sale. If you have not been following some of the other recent MVD sales, they've got a lot of titles on sale from Unearthed Films, Synapse Films, Radiance Films, Aero Video, 88 Films, just the US titles, not the UK titles, and then Blue Underground as well. This will be running all the way through Halloween. So cool. uh, if you are interested, make sure you check it out. It is, uh, it's pretty decent, but also it's MVD and a lot of their titles are on sale quite often. Like I swear, Arrow, Arrow Video, if you're really dying for a release, it's probably on sale right now. And if not, it'll be on sale in just a couple of weeks. That, that's what it always feels like. So cool. Uh, cool. yeah, just adding to that. Cool. I should just point out, yeah, Diabolic DVD. I've, I've always heard about this one as in Japan, but uh, now now I'll be able to, to participate directly. So, Yeah, Diabolic has been great for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Criterion had their October flash sale uh, just yeah. a couple days ago. And uh, yeah, no, no point in going too much in detail on it. Um, but we did get a huge announcement. Oppenheimer is getting a 4K release on November 21st. And it's got over three hours of bonus features, which is pretty exciting for a movie like this. Did you happen to catch this one in theaters? No, no, I, I was meaning to, but I, I didn't get to see either this or um, uh, Barbie. I haven't seen any of those yet. So it's uh, I, I think it's a pretty well-made film. I think that if it wasn't Christopher Nolan, it would likely not be lauded as much as it has been. Hmm. Uh, but it's it's still very good and and the big thing is the dialogue here is as i think maybe the best dialogue he's written in years Interesting. it's pretty well formulated but by the what's your favorite christopher nolan film or what are some of your favorites by the way uh i, I, I tend to, to i'm sorry to I, put you on the spot like that my friend 
I tend to always go back to the prestige. I, I think it might be his masterpiece, uh, primarily because it was in that interesting in between period for him where he was, he had started to get his chops, but he wasn't so large that it became unwieldy yet. And he took this story that was unique and well written and had this incredible twist, obviously, but. It, it is the one that lends itself best to rewatches, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good choice. That is a really good choice. What about you? Oh, Christopher Nolan films? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, maybe, uh, oh, gosh, I, I, I go to perhaps uh, Inception or uh, The Dark Knight or Batman Begins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think um, uh, I, I remember seeing Batman Begins for the first time, and it was, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, what uh, what they were able to do, and the time warps that were happening. It was, it was a really that was one of the the most thrilling experiences I had in, in sort of quote unquote recent cinema experiences. So, so uh, uh, yeah, so probably that, or but Inception too. I, I'm I've always been a fan of that one. Yeah, that's certainly a fun one. And I think really, really excelled in the theater experience, which it's Nolan. So a lot of his films do, obviously. But yeah, it's it's just a, a, a really great time to be able to see that on the on the big screen, biggest screen possible with a, a, a crowd of film fans, uh, with people that respect it and are in awe in the moments that that deserve the awe. Uh, I put up an interview this week with uh, the cast and crew of The Exorcist that had Doug Bradley, Pinhead himself, and uh, Harry Manfredini, the composer of Friday the 13th and a handful of other uh, wonderful films. So give that a watch if you are so compelled. Uh, this one, if you are into indie horror, uh, you may have heard of the fear footage. This is a found footage footage. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, like a, a group of creators that made a movie a few years ago and it was a small hit and they made a couple sequels and then they are making this called Project Eerie and you can order this now on the Fear Footage website and uh, I believe it's going to be another fan footage film. It says on Halloween 2020, Jesse and Jacob Warner disappeared while live streaming on social media and this is that live stream. Uh, okay. It's all fake, obviously, but uh, it is very... Very interesting. It's actually pretty well made. Everything they've done so far are pretty great. Oh, interesting. Oh, very interesting. Hmm. Uh, next up, and I think we're getting semi near the, the bottom of the road here, although now that I look at it, there's about 12 or 15 left. Uh, Saw X or Saw 10, <laughs> whatever we're calling it, this is coming out on 4K on November 21st. Are you a, a Saw fan? Have you seen many or any of the films? Yeah, I'm a Saw fan, but I haven't seen this one yet. But I, uh, but I, I am a fan. Uh, they're very, very, uh, ugh, yeah, yeah. So, so I was, uh, yeah, I'm a fan, but I haven't seen this one yet. I was lucky enough to be able to catch this in theaters, and I have to say, pleasantly surprised. I think this might okay. be top tier in the entire franchise. Like, no easily, kidding, really? Oh, not, well, I'm not I saying mean, it's necessarily the this. best. But top three easily. No kidding. What what are the others, by the way? Just just before, just so I, I know. Ooh, um, Again, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. So just I, I would say Saw three is definitely there, and then yeah. it's a toss up between Saw two and Saw. Cool. Okay. Yeah, Saw three I, I think is maybe my favorite in the, in the entire. Franchise. Yeah, I, I I think I I think Saw three is my favorite as well. That and then the traps in Saw two are just so well made. So well made. Uh, next one, The Color Purple is getting a 4K release, the Steven Spielberg film. This is coming on December 5th on 4K in the U.S. and December 4th in the U.K. And it will have a Steelbook release in the U.K. That looks really nice. And uh, there's going to be some of the ported over special features on here. Uh, you can pre-order this from Groove now. You can get the U.K. Steelbook on Amazon already. Uh, more Spielberg coming to 4K. Always a good thing. Yes, yes. Indeed. Uh, next one. 
Uh, the next Mondo Macabro title, this is a double feature of It's Not Good for a Man to Be Alone from 1973 and The House Without Frontiers from 1972. So this will be a double feature in a slipcover. And uh, this, again, just looks like another solid release. These are both uh, done by the same director, I believe. What is his name? I forgot. Uh, Olea he, is his last name. I'm sorry, could you say that again? These these are new for me as well, so... Uh, Mono Macabro, both directed by Olea. O L E A is the last name. Uh, 1972, 1973, and a, a part of that bundle that's going up tomorrow, and also a part of the Halloween sale. You'll be able to get it at both. And uh, this one is limited to 2,000 copies for the limited edition. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Oppenheimer also has a 4K steelbook available at Best Buy to pre order right now coming the same time as the standard release uh yeah looks good you can pre-order it it has gone out of stock a couple times so if you're wanting it uh you may want to pay attention sooner than later okay uh craig from deaf crocodile uh just to share with you this is exciting he got to work on the dark knight uh on the film itself because he worked at imax for quite some time oh no he kidding says, that's really cool he says working on that was definitely a career highlight oh that's great this city just, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry about that. Uh, you are fine. I love that. Uh, next up is the next Mondo Macabro title, and that is Special Silencers. This is one that people have been hearing about for a long time. Mondo has been not even secretly working on this. They've been very publicly letting people know this is coming. Uh, this is the title from 1982, starring Barry Prima. That is uh, supposed to be amazing. Um, wow. This is yeah, it's going to be region-free, HD restored, uh, done in the uh, home country. There's an extended version of this with some uh, SD inserts. The Indonesian audio is here, and it's going to have uh, the Mondo Macabro episode of the TV show on Indonesian cinema, which is maybe the most exciting part of this for me. You'll have a commentary by Andrew Liebold on this, double-sided sleeve on this, of course, with a 12-page full-color booklet numbered to 1,500 releases and uh, yeah, available tomorrow, available as part of the Halloween bundle. <laughs> that looks so cool. <laughs> looks like a great release. Indi yeah. Have you watched many films from Indonesia? No, no. I mean, I'm uh, very, very limited uh, in my in my uh, uh, exposure to Indonesian cinema. So uh, yeah, I've never seen Special Silencers. So I, I think most are limited uh, in their Indonesian cinema because they don't get a lot of releases. So It'll be nice to see this get some wide love and, really and cool. Yeah, I hope people will check this out. Uh, Kino Lorber is continuing to put out the Monk series. They're putting out the second season on December 19th. This is going to have all 16 of the season two episodes, a couple of the ported over featurettes. We got a character profile, uh, the Minds Behind Monk featurette with the writer, producer, and star, Tony Shaloub. You're going to have another character profile and then the precinct tours with Jason Gray Stanford, and that is Monk. Uh, from Hallmark, uh, one of their Christmas movies, they are releasing five more minutes, moments like these, on October 24th. And uh, not much to say about it, because I don't know much of anything. Moments like... Okay, okay. Yeah, moments... Uh, of course, I clicked the wrong thing. One second. <laughs> There's a lot of titles this month, uh, this week. Whoops. Uh, there it is. Five more minutes, moments like these. And it, it supposedly inspired by Scotty McCreary's hit song. Oh, wow. And, I, and if I remember reading right this morning, I think this was a sequel of sorts. A sequel. So five. Wow. Like Even $2 more $2 minutes. More? Yeah, more. Okay. <laughs> wow. Again, I don't know this series. So it's just Hallmark releasing Christmas movies. Okay. That, that's the big thing is people watch them. And I'm just glad they're getting a physical release. Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is getting a 4K release from Turbine Media in Germany, and you get your choice of four different media book <laughs> options. That's, that's really cool. Uh, which one would I choose? My goodness. It's a good question, because they, I mean, this is a film that has some great <sighs> art. Wow. That, that's the one that, that's often seen, I think, in a lot of physical media releases, the one that you yes. have on the screen. So maybe I'd, I'd opt for one of the other choices. 
if I had to. Oh, they look, so, but they all look so enticing. Oh, that's. I'm really leaning crazy. towards this one if I were to get one. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the big draw here for everybody that may have the other 4K release, and the odds are Criterion will likely release this on 4K eventually. Um, but the big thing here, this release is going to have Gonzo, the life and work of Dr. Hunter S. Thompson on Blu-ray, which previously that documentary was only ever available on DVD. Yeah. So that's probably not going to be on the Criterion release, and it's definitely not on the Arrow release. So if you really want that one on Blu-ray, you may want to go for this. Hmm. Uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, Titanic is also going to have a giant collector's edition also releasing on December 12th. You're going to have a big hardcover coffee table book, detailed ship schematics, uh, reproduction movie prop premiums, including boarding pass, launch viewing ticket, and some other stuff. And then sheet music for My Heart Will Go On. Uh, the price on this right now is fairly exorbitant, but I bet it comes down quite a bit. What, it, what is, is it? $125. Wow. Yeah, I, I I have a feeling it'll probably drop to like seventy five or eighty, probably. That a lot of times these Amazon pre orders go up for a very high price and then drop fairly quickly. Wow, I've sung the song "My Heart Will Go On" in karaoke a number nice. of times. How, how'd you I'm, do? I'm sure you're, I'm sure everyone wanted to hear that. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe not. It's 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 uh, it's it. My singing is pretty dreadful, but yeah. Well, we'll just blame yeah. it on the acoustics in the room. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Indicator announced cool. a few titles this morning. They are releasing the first couple that we're going to talk about on January twenty second in the UK and January twenty third in the US. Both of these are going to be Blu rays. This first one is Impossible Object from nineteen seventy three. This is a John Frankenheimer film. And uh, this is going to have two presentations of the film. We have Impossible Object, the original French theatrical cut, and then Story of a Love Story, the alternative English language international cut, which is nine minutes shorter. There's a commentary with Tim Lucas on this, an interview with John Frankenheimer from 73, and a whole lot of other stuff, including a 36-page booklet uh, with some new writing on it. And, I mean, this one sounds great. Yeah, I heard about this as well. I, I actually, I didn't. I I, I heard, caught. I, I heard about this, but I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't catch the part about the the different versions. So, yeah, well, that's really interesting because uh, um, uh, you know uh, I know John Frankenheimer, but I don't know. I haven't seen this film. So, yeah, from what I hear, this this one has not been widely renowned. By yeah, me. yeah. I, I so wow, great. Yeah, uh, that looks great. Uh, next one is Christopher Lee yeah. in Jinnah, I believe is how you say it. Uh, this is from 1998, so a fairly late one for Christopher Lee. Uh, same thing, January 22nd in the UK, January 23rd in the US. Uh, Christopher Lee, actually, he supposedly said this was one of his better performances. He was very proud of this one. Hmm. And uh, this one has been hard to see for quite some time. Uh, this is going to come as an HD master. You got an insightful documentary about the making of the film, the original trailer, image gallery, a 40 page booklet with new essays on this. Um, Christopher Lee, how do you feel about Christopher Lee? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, legend, legend. I, but I have not seen this work as well. So, uh, well, his filmography is so immense. Immense. I'm, I am a, a, a yes, uh, Christopher Lee uh is just a uh, right just a legend absolute legend so uh, how do you feel so. about christopher lee uh i tend to love him a, a lot of his performances are great uh, a lot of them can get very uh samey if you watch a lot of his movies in in a short time span but i think overall it is a it is because he is great at what he does and a lot of it will will feel very similar because he played a lot of similar characters, but he's yes. he's great, always great. Uh, and then finally, January twenty second in the UK only because this is a website exclusive title for them, which that's the first time they've done this. And the email seemed to indicate that they are planning on doing that for multiple years. So oh. get used to uh, indicator website exclusives, I guess. Okay. The man who had power over women from nineteen sixty nine. 
This is a Rod Taylor and Carol White film. Uh, this one says, The dark side of swinging London is explored in The Man Who Had Power Over Women. Uh, womenizing talent agent Peter Reaney splits from his long-suffering wife, moves in with his best friend Val, and promptly starts an affair with Val's wife, Jody. Added to the complexities of his personal life is his client, wayward pop star Barry Black, for whom he is asked to cover up a dark secret. This is going to come with a 4K restoration, uh, some interviews. Uh, then we have a training film about the military police from 1956, made for the British Army, featuring Jim Dale, which is uh, supposedly his first acting uh, credit at all. Uh, we've got some other short films on here, and it looks like a nice, solid release. But again, website exclusive, and it's limited to only 3,000 copies. You won't find this on Orbit or Diabolic or any other websites. No physical stores, just the website. That's interesting. That's I didn't know that about the website exclusivity. Huh. Yeah. It's, I wonder it's what that, that means. Choice. Is there anything behind that, or is it just... Uh... It, it seems like they are maybe looking for better returns on some titles, or it could be to get some people to buy titles that they may not choose if they were available everywhere. That's not an interesting sure. point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, in that email from Indicator today, a couple other things I wanted to share just in case you did not get the email. Uh, the, the first kind of important thing is that they announced they're ending their loyalty program. So if you had bought from their website and you had points, you have until the end of the year to use those points. So don't let them disappear without spending them if you have a giant pack of points ready to go. And uh, speaking of that, a really good time to do that would be that they just indicated that they're about to have a sale before the end of the year to celebrate their seventh anniversary. Seven so, years already? My goodness. Seven years of indicator. And I think I just said before the end of the year. I meant before the end of the month. So it's coming in the next 12 days. So so okay. be prepared. Okay. Uh, yeah, lots lots to think about there for Indicator. Um, Indicator, it, it seems like you know them pretty decently. Have you checked out many of their releases? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, especially during the early days, you know, they were they they, they kind of came out of they came out of the gate uh, swinging, and uh, it's been it's been that high road ever since you know what what was it what were some of these early early titles what it was like happy birthday to me happy birthday to me and the john carpenter vampires yeah vampires also christine i want to say uh, yes yeah. or no yeah so, um so, george yeah, C. scott's and, hardcore yeah yeah hardcore yeah yeah exactly so they they can and it was just uh so they became i think uh in, in many great ways and still are a type of uh uh another a go-to place for and, and uh, yeah for a physical media goodness. So I agree. Uh, next up a 24 just today announced a release of the film showing up from 2023. This is a Kelly Reichardt film, which if you've never watched Kelly Reichardt film, you should because Kelly Reichardt is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I've heard great things about this film stars, Michelle Williams stars, Hong Chow, uh, Andre Benjamin is in this Judd Hirsch. Great cast. Uh, this is available on 4k and blu-ray. There's also a commentary on this with Kelly Reichardt, which if I remember right, that's pretty rare. I don't think Kelly Reichardt does many commentaries. It's interesting. And uh, this is, it's not one of the giant A24 releases that, that don't fit on the shelf. Uh, the pattern for them seems to be, if it had a previous release, it'll be the giant release. But if it's not had a previous release, mm. it'll be the normal shape of a Blu-ray so it'll be just the, the same normal height as all of your other releases fit on your shelf and everything. Okay. Uh, but you, yeah, Dolby Vision 4K on this. You got even some other featurettes. Uh, this looks great. And, and fairly inexpensive. I mean, the 4K of this is $35 direct from them. Uh, then the newer film Dumb Money is coming sometime soon on Blu-ray from Sony. We don't have a full release date yet. But you can pre-order this now, and I've heard great things about this. Stars Paul Dano, Seth Rogen, Pete Davidson, Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, I've heard this movie is surprisingly good, but I, I still need to see this one. And then, the last thing that we're going to be able to talk about tonight, the last title for the Mondo Macabro sale, is Dr. Jekyll and the Werewolf on 4K. This is the Paul Nashi title, and uh, mm. if... When, when you get this in, it will not be censored with, with the werewolf faces. Uh, here is the reverse side of this one. 
Uh, both 4K and Blu-rays are making their world premieres uh, on, on disc on 4K and Blu-ray. That's astonishing. That's really um, awesome. Wow. As a Paul Nashie title, that's, that's pretty yeah. exciting. Wow, uh, that's big... very exciting. 4K. The big thing they wanted wow. to stress to people is that the Spanish licensor for this only had access to the negatives for the original cut, which was the more tame version. So they could not find any more elements, so they had to rely on some uh, standard definition and inserts to get the uncut version of the film, which will only be on the Blu-ray. So the 4K disc will actually be that original Spanish cut, which is the, the more tame version. It's good to know really good to know wow this is that's this is pretty big yeah yeah paul nashi in 4k is always exciting yeah. yeah uh this one's gonna have a career profile of jack taylor you got some archival interviews with paul nashi about the movie itself um the filmmaker victor madalano is going to be on the career of the director neon klamovsky new audio commentary with the gentleman from nashi cast uh yeah you got a slip cover on this one that is going to look like this um, great looking release from them again, available tomorrow and also a part of the Halloween sale. You can get the 4k of this both times, uh, tomorrow and during the Halloween sale. Very nice. That was it for the week. Uh, for what's coming up next week. We always go through this pretty quickly, just in case you forgot. Okay. Uh, we've got the others coming from criterion on 4k next week. Uh, Red Dragon 4K from Kino, Cujo 4K from Kino, Messiah of Evil from Radiance, The Muppets Take Manhattan 4K, Toxic Avenger Collection on 4K, Shaw Brothers Classics Volume 3, uh, Psych the Complete Collection, The Devil Doll from Warner Archive, Fascination 4K from Indicator. I got to get this one. Uh, Decision to Leave 4K from Mubi. I want people to, to not cool. forget that Mubi is doing Decision to Leave on 4K. Wow. Um. What else? Oh, there's also the Godzilla 4K title. Oh, there. that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, not going to have English subs, right? Sadly. Hmm. I, I think. Uh, we've got uh, Contempt from Lionsgate in 4K, yeah. the Godard film. Visible Secret from Radiances next week. Lips of Blood 4K from Indicator. Beast from Haunted Cave from uh, Film Masters. Zombie Holocaust 4K from Severin. Cool. Uh, that, that Paramount Scares Volume 1 4K, which this is probably a good time. In case you did not hear, they, they were going with the whole mystery title idea until release. And now everybody knows that the mystery title, in case you haven't heard, is Sweeney Todd, which I, I'm actually kind of uh, sad about because now I feel like I, I want to buy it because I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see anything else exciting that Kino cult, uh, those three titles, those drop next Tuesday. Like I had said earlier, uh, dead girl from unearth films, a couple from visual vengeance next week, cool. rock around the clock from Sony, oh. uh, vile from MVD dark wind season two, uh, the, the newest Jackie Chan title right on. Cool. Uh, that looks to be about it. Anything from next week other than the others wow. that you're looking to pick up? I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't seen the Meg 2, so uh, I've seen a lot. Uh, yeah, and uh, always, uh, uh, let's see. Shaw Brothers said, I'm a big fan of Muppets Take Manhattan. Nice. Uh, I saw that as in the theater, in fact. So, a Muppet I, uh, I happen to have a, a Muppet tattooed on my arm. That is Are you the serious? Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I've got animal tattooed right there. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. I always get a kick. You saw the Muppet movie as well, right? I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Many, many times. Oh, but the animal bit with the... Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Well done. Well done. I, I Yes, my, my respect for you, it was already through the roof, but now it's just, you know, <laughs> into, into, into out of you know, outer space. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, Muppets. Muppets were formidable for me. They, they are. <laughs> they were. They were a saving grace for me. Uh, well, we we didn't get too much into your channel before we got started. Uh, for the three people that may have never heard of uh, Daisuke, you want to share what you go over on your channel? Oh, uh, the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Yes. So, just it. Uh, my name is Daisuke Beppu, and so I I uh, talk about. Um, I just talk about movies, I suppose. I guess I, I 
tend to it tends to be around the Criterion Collection area. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I've been a big fan uh, just watching movies since I was a little kid. So uh, it's always nice to be able to try to catch up uh, as you know at my own snail pace slow snail pace uh, way about things. But yeah, so Daisuke Beppo on YouTube. And uh, linked in the description below, if you've never watched Daisuke, it is an inspirational journey through film. Uh, somebody that has a way with words that I have adored for quite some time. And as I said earlier, it's just a, an immense honor to have you on the channel. I, I really appreciate you doing this. No, 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 no. You, very kind of you to invite me. Thank you so much. Very, very kind of you. Uh, that leads us to our film discussion, which I was so excited to hear that you wanted to talk about. And tonight, we're going to talk about the team-up of John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. Uh, so the big thing, why, why those two? Why, why was that the one that you wanted to talk about? Oh, I've always been a fan of John Carpenter and uh, a big fan of Kurt Russell. And there's something quite magical about that type of team-up. And it's uh, each of those films, the John Carpenter, Kurt Russell team ups in their own way is it's, it's something special. So uh, I thought what better opportunity than uh, right. Uh, than talking with you. Yes. On your great channel. I, I have enjoyed Kurt Russell in every single thing that he has ever done with John Carpenter. And there's something special about that, that the chemistry in this team up. Uh, uh, what, what is it about Kurt Russell on on screen that makes these special for you oh i think his on-screen charisma is is uh without doubt um so likable and every i think everything he does you you always are rooting for him and he has an appeal that is i think uh, it's very rugged and also very sensitive and and uh i, I mean i like how there's a, a real strong earnestness about all of his performances. Uh, and they're quite wide ranging, you know, from oh, you know, yeah. something like the thing to escape from New York or to escape from LA to Elvis. Right. And then uh, uh, big trouble. So it's, uh, I, I find that combination to work really, really well. And also to it just, uh, the, the commentary tracks, whenever you get them yes. uh, between John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. I mean, those are some of the, classic classic commentary tracks as well so that just adds to the to the uh, uh the aura and the likability factor for for him and, and for both of them for that that matter there is something about those commentaries that you can tell that even outside of their working relationship there is just some immense friendship between these two guys that you just yeah. are dying to be a part of they they have this this beautiful chemistry that you could just tell they are probably having the most fun when they are making any of these films together. Definitely. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. It, it, you can just feel it when you listen to them. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. It makes it even more, more appealing uh, when you watch these and you want to watch them again and again, and again. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's only five of them. So let's go through and talk about the, the five team ups here. And I think probably the best one to, to talk about is the most out of left field one. And that's the Elvis film. Sure. Uh, Kurt Russell is starring in this as Elvis, and uh, it's 1979, made for TV. Uh, like I said, Kurt Russell plays Elvis, and it's honestly, it fits Kurt Russell way better than you think it would, especially in 1979. How do you feel about this one overall? Oh, I think it's great. Yeah. And uh, what, what was that release? It was the Shout Select release? Yes. I think, yeah. So uh, I think that was also a very strong release, maybe a couple, a few years back, I think. But yeah, I, you're, you're right. It's something that I think from my growing up with John Carpenter, that was the film that was one that I wasn't able to find. Right. And so that was the one that was a, a more re relatively speaking recent discovery. But you're you're right. There's a you you think oh what is this? This isn't a horror film. This isn't a, a sci-fi film. So how am I going to react to this? But you're right. There is there is this innate charm that Kurt Russell brings, and you you realize that's such a perfect fit. Yeah. And just the 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 moves. It's it's not like a a a, a kind of a hundred percent. He is mimicking everything of, of Elvis. And, you know, you look at Kurt Russell's picture, look at Elvis Presley's picture side to side. <laughs> there might not necessarily be a lot of similarity there on the surface. But, uh, you know, granted those uh, uh, discernible uh, traits, 
there is a way in which he inhabits the spirit and makes it his own. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's really phenomenal. Yes, Kurt Russell just is is uh, is the, the the reason to watch that. It's an amazing performance. The big thing I wanted to highlight for anybody that has never given this a watch, obviously you should, but it's a made for TV movie and it feels so much more earnest than it you would expect for a made for TV film, especially mm-hmm. 1979. And yeah. I, I miss those days. I, I miss, you know, ABC magic of the movies Sunday night. Let's, let's show a made for TV t- film type of thing that they did back then. And obviously now everything just goes to streaming, but there was something about this. You hear that we're going to be showing this made for TV movie on Tuesday night. And it's directed by John Carpenter starring Kurt Russell about Elvis. You're not going to have a lot of faith in that probably, but for some reason they tried so much more than you would expect them to. And it's, it's, they pulled it off. It it is so well done. And like you said, he's no Austin Butler from last year or anything, but Mm. he is Kurt Russell playing a a damn good Elvis. Yeah. And I really, Ryan, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I forgot about that. I forgot how, yeah, there is something about the the TV movie that we don't have anymore, right? right? And there's something about that that type of, of entertainment that, uh, yeah, I totally forgot about. When, but you're absolutely right. When I was growing up around around this time, you know, the 70s, and, uh, for me, it would have been 80s primarily, the, the, the TV movie uh, concept. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. There was there is a type of magic quality that you're, yeah, it's uh, we have different ways of, of uh, consuming that type of media now. But yeah, yeah, back in the day, you're right. And, and Elvis is a great example of this. Yeah, and a lot of the greats that we all appreciate as directors, a lot of them had directed made for TV movies, and I, we don't have enough of them on disc. Uh, places like Kino Lorber have been doing their best to save some, unfortunately. Many of them are just straight lost to time, and we will probably never get to see them, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, we got four left. W- what is the next team up that you think we should talk about? Uh, in what order? Is it... Uh... Whatever you feel is best. What what flows best, or we could rank them, because uh, Elvis would probably be my number five. So whichever way you want to look at that. Then let's go. I guess we can go with... Well, we have to talk. Let's talk about the escape films. It's a good double feature next, yeah. Yes. So Escape from New York and then Escape from L.A., but I guess Escape from New York first because it came first in the chronology. Yeah, Escape from New York uh, obviously sets up this franchise that is a lot of fun. And uh, when it came out, it was done in a way that was, uh, you know, set in the very near future of, I think it was 97 was the year it was set or 96, something like that. And Snake Plissken is the individual that we get out of this, who is the roving badass through New York, trying to rescue the president and get him out of New York and uh, survive through the night. And of course, New York is now this uh, massive, massive prison, essentially, that is overrun in ways that you could never possibly imagine until you see it. And I think there's a lot of charm in this movie. And I got to say... I did not have a lot of love for either of these two movies. And like I said earlier about uh, John Waters, until I saw them on the big screen, there was something magical about seeing them on the big screen that made me love them so much more. Obviously, Escape from New York is a classic, and so many people love it. Uh, but it, it, for some reason, it just never clicked with me until that moment. Once, once I saw it on the big screen, man, this thing, amazing. So many great people in this, uh, so many wonderful performances. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I think just as I was joining the the chat was going into talk talking about Ernest Borgnine, yeah, and Winnie the Pooh or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, speaking of Ernest Borgnine, yes, exactly, one of the great Ernest Borgnine roles among a, 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 a cast of, of uh, performers that are really excellent. Adrian Barbo and Donald Pleasant. Oh, of course, Kurt Russell. Yes, yes. Isaac Hayes, Lee Van Isaac, Cleef, yes. Tom Atkins. Oh, Tom Atkins. Can you imagine? Oh, my goodness. What a cast. This is an what amazing cast. cast. They, they, pull them, they pull off their performances with such uh, amazing you know, confidence and gusto. And uh, each they're, sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not so good. But in their own ways, in their own little parts of the film, you, you kind of root for them. Yep. Or you're you're rooting against them. And that's that that's it's it's kind of like uh, um, uh, 
you know, sometimes it, it, it's it's almost it's like little sort of Game of Thrones in a yeah. way. You know, you, you sometimes this this character is a, a hero. Sometimes it's a, uh, the character is a villain. So it has that dynamic for for certain uh, for sake, while also being a, a Carpenter film with Kurt Russell uh, topping the bill there. With uh, this is the first time to talk about this uh, in this conversation, but an incredible soundtrack and score for this as yep. well. Uh, the the Carpenter score on this is just magnificently done. Yep, it, it's uh, it. Yeah, there's a reason why John Carpenter is is known uh, a, an artist of many hats. One of which being as a musician and a composer, and and uh, quite quite rightly so for films like Escape from New York. So then, many years later, they they yep. film a sequel to this called Escape from L.A. And uh, this was quite uh, something that a lot of people were kind of clamoring for back then because they loved Snake Plissken. And then one of the other films that we're going to talk about in a minute also came out and made people love Kurt Russell. But Escape from L.A. came and uh, it it cooled those expectations quite quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you go first on this one. How do you feel about Escape from L.A.? Oh gosh! When I first saw it back in the day, I I must admit I was I was a bit bit uh, disappointed with it. Uh, I was ex I I don't know. I, it was it wasn't quite uh, it wasn't quite hitting everything that I probably was seeking again back in the day. Right. But now it I can see it. I, I love it. I, it's much funnier now than I uh, gave it credit for when I first saw it. And I, I guess I, I wasn't ready for uh, its humor. Uh, I mean, the first one had, uh, the Escape from New York had a lot of humor, but this I think is really upping the ante. Uh, and so as a type of uh, uh, um, uh, really well-constructed parody in a lot of ways, I think it does, uh, does its job very well. And, uh, you know, I, I was also... Back in the day, I was looking at it as all oh, the special effects and, and things of that nature. But now looking back on it and, and looking at it through that lens uh, and, and uh, accepting it for what it is, I, it's, it's uh, quite good. It's not my favorite John Carpenter directed film, uh, but uh, it's certainly uh, it, it, it has grown on me a lot as I've uh, myself have, uh, uh, aged and uh, the years have passed, but yeah, it, it's it's growing um, growing uh, much higher in my esteem as I as I watch it more and more. I don't know how about you, my friend. Well, like I said, uh, I recently was able to watch both of these on the big screen, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I pretty much I I never loved Escape from L.A. I thought it was quite poor, um, especially on uh, you know old shoddy DVDs and and VHSs. The the special effects and and. Even that they, they don't look great on the big screen, but uh, they looked terrible on on VHS and DVD. And on the big screen, something about it, I, I just appreciated the all around camp feel more. Mm. It, it, there's something about it that it wasn't cheesy to the point that it was bad necessarily. You know, and it's still not a great film. I I, I understand mm. that, but there was something about it that just made it more fun and letting loose and watching it on the big screen with the group of Carpenter fans. Just like I said about John Waters, that was revelatory for this film because it made it something that was, uh, you know, if you were going to do a filmography watch through for Carpenter, that, that one may have been a bit of a chore, but watching it with this group, it was like discovering a new hidden gem that I'd never seen before. It, it was fantastic to see that way. Oh, that's well said. Oh, that makes me happy to hear you, you, you describe it in that way. Uh, it, it, it's a good time. And if you've never seen it, I, I understand you're probably not missing a lot, but, uh, I, I still think you should probably see it. Mm. Um, me, I, I think next we should probably talk about what many people think is one of his most fun films. And that is big trouble in little China. Yes. How do you feel about big Trouble in little China? This movie's wild. Oh, it could be my favorite John Carpenter film. It could be wow. one of my favorite films period nice i love this film i yeah. absolutely love this film tell us why oh i i it's just uh it, it i love its zany nature i love the way it just goes from from uh from uh setup to setup to setup with this uh fast pace 
Uh, we barely get to know the characters, but again, that's not to say that we don't. We get to know them uh, in a very economical uh, way of approaching the characterizations, and we really get to know these characters. Yeah, uh, and it's very economical. It's very brisk in terms of its pace, and a lot happens, and so many characters happen, and it, it's just it's this. Uh, uh, it goes deeper, deeper, deeper into these levels until you get into this huge. Uh, this the way it just again uh, develops and develop a uh, development upon development. Uh, and it just turns in uh, slowly but surely from a type of uh, I don't know Howard Hawks film into uh, a, a, a sort of buddy movie, and then a monster movie, and then a uh, uh, sort of martial arts epic. And it's 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 wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And I, I love also its handling of uh, uh, say uh, uh, Asian and Asian American. Uh, say uh, type of uh, approach and uh, viewpoint based on those uh, uh, cultural uh, perspectives. Yes, and uh, it treats them in a way that is actually a very, uh, uh, very nuanced and uh, quite, uh, quite complex, actually, uh, which has a lot of uh, ways of reading into it, uh, uh, many different possible uh, interpretations, as well as being this rip roaring comedy uh, with Jack Burton. Uh, Kurt Russell at the heart and center. I love this film so much. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I've, I've uh, taken. No, please. Well, how do you feel, my friend? You can feel free to wax on as long as you want. Uh, th this movie, this movie is special. And I, I think one of the main reasons why is what you just touched on at the end here. John Carpenter. Uh, what is the best way to say this? He, he treats this film that is downright silly in almost every single scene with the utmost respect and that makes it so authentic at its core that you can't yeah. help but love every single shot of this film and the, the the nuance of treating those other cultures is what makes this fun because really at the heart of it it's kind of a parody on action heroes it's all the entire film is making fun of jack burton but it's not doing it in a way that makes him look like a dope through the whole movie it's making it making it ridiculous that we in in Western film have held up these heroes to this point of this godlike stature for so long. And it's done in a way that is is just perfect for Kurt Russell. And without their chemistry between the creator and the actor, I don't think they could have pulled it off the way that they did. Yeah, you describe it so well. And there's a perfect, perfect blending of, say, that self-effacing nature of Jack Burton in the hands of Kurt Russell. Yes. But also that bluster that you need, you know, that, that, uh, that sense of, of a type of uh, I'm here type of loud presence. You need that. And then there's also this really interesting uh, uh, way in which he almost uh, accidentally uh, uh, emerges on the scene almost by accident and causes yeah. all these things to happen on the one hand, or things are happening to him. But along the way, he's never disrespectful. He always respects his surroundings and the people that he meets and the situation he, he finds himself in. He tries to have a, an air of confidence, uh, but understandably so because he's human like we all are. We always want to try to act like we know things and we're in control when, in fact, we, we're not. And that's, I think, Jack Burton very much so. But he does it in a way that's always respectful, sometimes poking uh, fun at himself, but he's okay with that. Yeah. And then sometimes trying to uh, save the day as well, because he's really earnestly wanting to help the people around. And that's great. And there are moments to when he even acknowledges his own weaknesses. You know, there's a, a moment where he's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that, that good of a guy, but I'm doing my best. Yeah. That kind of, kind of a self in, uh, introspection is very rare yeah. and very refreshing. And so this complete package of a type of parody of, of uh, hero films or the hero position while also being the self-effacing comedy uh, and uh, uh, and it's it's just a perfect pack. It's like a lightning in a bottle type of film for me, uh, for the reason uh, many reasons. One of which you, I think you elucidated on right now so so well. Yeah, it's quite a subversive film. If you go into it expecting something and you've never seen it before, you are you know expecting the hero to be this this brooding pack of machismo around everything that he's stepping foot in, but. Uh, yeah, he, he, he bumbles, he is, he, uh, stumbles upon the right answers multiple times that he never should have found. Uh, he is overall the, the, the sidekick character basically through this. And 
he acts like the hero which makes it that much more fun um this movie is a masterpiece and easily top three to five uh, of john carpenter's filmography and that's that's the scary thing any other director this would be their best film by leaps and bounds but it's carpenter and it makes it difficult to rank because his stuff is so stupendous uh yeah th this movie this movie is astonishing and uh by the way a great release from uh shout scream factory whatever uh, special features just falling off of the disc there are so many um it, it, they literally on the back of the the blu-ray art had to type the words and more because <laughs> there was so many that they couldn't fit them all on the back yeah yeah i, I have that release i agree it's great absolutely great astonishingly great and really wonderful commentary on this if i remember right they I think this is the one they they just straight don't talk about the movie. They they basically just hang out and, and have a long conversation. It's either that one or Escape from New York, one of the two. Yeah, they they, they have they're having such a good time with this commentary, uh, Carpenter yeah. and Russell. Yeah, they're having such a great time, and they're just laughing about like they're talking about like oh Carter Wong, look how big Carter Wong. Who's like James Pax? Oh wow, he, he used yeah. to be a model. Oh yeah, it's all that guy. And it's just oh, it's such a great time such a great time and like and and kurt russell's just laughing ah i can't believe oh my goodness and just acknowledging these points that you make about jack burton and and, and the like. So, oh it's a great comment i think it's probably could be my favorite of the bunch i think well actually you know um there are some other great commentary tracks so i, I don't want to speak ahead of myself but it's, it's one of the best ones uh that leads us into our final comment uh carpenter and kurt russell team up here and uh, that is the the seminal The Thing. Uh, this movie obviously was hated upon release, uh, was a complete bomb. People were not expecting a movie like this, and it is emerged as what many will look at as the masterpiece from Carpenter's filmography. Uh, I, I appreciate this movie for so many reasons, but the biggest one being Kurt Russell's uh, sort of held back performance in this, which could have been much more in your face and authoritative uh, and it's really not until it needs to be but obviously the the most important thing in this that people remember this film for is the astonishing level of practical effects in this movie that are mind-blowing some of the scenes in this it, it is still like a mystery on how they could get something to look so good on film the thing uh tell me about how you feel on it and uh and any exciting memories that you have associated with it Oh yeah, I think you you expressed it so well. Yes, the uh, Rob Bottin effects and the uh, the this was the stuff. This is, I think, uh, I mean, if if someone had to try to explain to someone what was what were the eighties like, what were the eighties like in 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 America, I, I yeah. would say, go watch the thing. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that's <laughs> that's I, that I think it's just it's in many ways it's like a perfect movie. I mean, it is a perfect movie. It's one of those things where you watch it every single time and and you're not you know when 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 things are going to jump, you know when it's going to happen. But it still gets you and uh it's great too because you can see it for so many things as you say the practical effects. It's fun to see how they did it. And oh, it's yeah. fun to see you can kind of see the the blend and you can kind of see it coming, but you're still shocked. It's that kind yeah. of fun time at the movies. And that's also adding to its rewatchability factor, not to mention, of course, the plot itself makes it so intricate. You know, when, what happens to these characters at what point is, is this when they, ch they change or are they still right? So that kind of thing happens every single time. And the number of characters that are there, I mean, it really shouldn't have worked. I mean, you have a bunch of characters uh, that, uh, it's 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 in this 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 outpost that uh, it's very bleak. It's very dark. It goes into a lot of places that even add to the bleakness. So perhaps it it really shouldn't have worked. But the fact that it works so uh, so remarkably and miraculously it, as it does, I think is is a testament to the way that it it, it balances tension and suspense and the gore effects. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the things, too, that I think is, is so great about Carpenter's filmography is that he's able to make this balance so well. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think The Thing is, in me, is the perfect encapsulation of that. And indeed, I would say, as much as I would say Big Trouble in Little China is my personal favorite of, uh, of John Carpenter's directed films, I would say that if I had to pick what would be the best, most perfect representation, encapsulation of Carpenter's aesthetic on cinema, 
it would be the thing. Well said. I, I mean, th there are scenes in this that are more tense than any of his other films. And he's got, you know, one of the, the most popular horror movies ever in, in Halloween in his back pocket, basically. Yes. And, and there's still scenes from this that are exponentially more tense than I feel while watching Halloween. Uh, this, the, the score on this again is a masterpiece. Uh, it, it is, um, to steal a word I used a moment ago for a different reason, uh, on big trouble, it is almost brooding in nature. There's something about it that feels like it is this uh, character under the surface that is causing you to feel something that you can't even see on screen. And as you're watching the, the character development of this, which by the way, I haven't even said any of the other actors' names. I mean, Wilford Brimley is amazing in this. Keith yep. David is uh, the best performance he's ever given in this. And th the interactions between them are so spot on for somebody that has been stuck in the middle of this tundra for months and months and months with no one else. And it is it is just a... Something about it is so... like It draws you in on every scene, but also repels you because they are so off-putting in the way that they end up treating each other. I, I adore this movie, as do most of you watching probably, but it is something that deserves the recognition that is finally getting after all these years. Yeah, well said. Bravo. Yes, and, and yes, I also agree to Keith David. What a performance it is. Although I must say, too, I, I really enjoyed, um, what is it? There's something about Mary. But yes, yes, it's strong, strong performance here. And uh, they, there's... Uh, um, there, the, the characters, yes, there's a way in which they are quite unlikable. Yes. And on, at, on any other day of the week, it just so happens that there is this thing about a thing and the alien, right? So, <laughs> so that turns the tables in a lot of ways, but, but maybe in any other story or any other film that these characters might find themselves in, they might be quite the unlikable characters in that bunch, but here they are the, maybe the the heroes or the anti-heroes or maybe the, the the heroes who don't want to be heroes and i think mccready uh kurt russell's character i think fits that description uh, to a t oh, yeah. uh, which i think makes for even more fascinating watch and even more of a compelling watch to 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 uh, uh, uh merit further re rewatch which is why as you say it's has this garnered this reputation which i think will, will carry along with it uh for years to come the uh, the unlikability factor is something that not enough people talk about for this movie, and it that is quite a risk. If you are making a film and your your characters are unlikable, many people will walk away feeling this loathing towards the entire film. And in all reality, all that means is those characters did their job. They they made you hate those characters, <laughs> which that's what they wanted to do. So very good. You you did good, and now you deserve a paycheck. But unfortunately, that means many in the audience are going to walk away and say, well, I just didn't like that. And unfortunately, it takes, it takes this moment of really ingesting the film and understanding how it made you feel and looking inward on, on what those characters meant to you and why you didn't like them and, and separating that I didn't like the character from I didn't like the film. So I, I think he, he definitely deserves more recognition for that aspect as well. Oh, I'm that is such a great cut. So astute. That's a great observation. This idea of looking inward and yeah. be able to make those separations between how one might react negatively to a character versus the film writ large that is so yeah you're oh spot on well done uh so carpenter obviously we're talking about the kurt russell ones tonight but other uh, other team ups that he's been with are, are always great but i've always wanted to find out for most people what do you think is his most underrated film oh uh, john carpenter as a whole he's all his entire filmography Wow, that is a good question. I mean, I would have said maybe in the mouth of madness, but I think that's gotten a lot of yeah. of positive vibes, especially with the recent, you know, again, uh, 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 kudos to uh, the great people over at uh, Shout and Scream Factory, right? Yeah. But um, um, oh gosh, I, maybe one that doesn't get a lot of uh, attention, maybe is a film like I would say, uh, gosh, um, oh god, that's a good question. I, I'm I fall on this as well. I don't know how much love I gave Ghost of Mars when I first saw it, but that's I'm beginning to to get get the 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 um, 
the good feels <laughs> when when watching that as well and, and uh gosh what's another one um that's a really good question mm, maybe um uh maybe a film like village of the damned perhaps as well the with christopher reeve you had somebody that else that doesn't get a lot of that you, doesn't yeah. get a lot of attention but i think it's good it's really scary yeah, it's yeah. very intense, and it does something do, too, which is which is interesting from uh, the earlier uh, film version. I saw a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences as well. So maybe I, I'd go with that one. I don't know. How, how about you? What what would you say? Uh, depending on the day, I tend to lean either towards, uh, and this is going to sound hilarious because a lot of us love these movies, but I think in in his filmography, they're underrated because they're really both great. But it's it would either be Christine, which I mm-hmm. think is way better made than people give it credit for. Um, but I got to go all the way back for him and assault on precinct 13, that one alone. I mean, there's so many, he, he starts the movie by shooting a child in the face (laughs) and, and in any other theater with any other filmmaker, a lot of people would just be turned off immediately by, by the just crude violence, especially for when that came out. But the score alone for that movie keeps me in my seat that that movie has maybe my favorite score from him and uh the movie as a whole it because it feels so much like a western and he has always been so uh attached to the hip with the idea of directing a western i feel like that shows off a lot of his instinctual skills because he wants to shoot like a western even though he's not made the true western so this idea of good guys versus bad guys uh having having characters that might be morally gray, like a lot of the classic Westerns and seeing who you will uh, agree with and sympathize with as you go through this movie. It is something that every time I watch it, if you, if you pay attention to a different character each time, you almost get a different movie. It's like a choose your own adventure book, because no matter how you're, you're viewing each of the characters from the beginning, you don't know exactly how they're going to end up at the end of the film. And I don't think enough people look at Assault on Precinct 13 and put it in the upper echelon of his films. I really love that. Oh, I've never thought of it in that way, like a choose your own adventure style. But you're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. There is a way they're, they're, they're so mismatched. Yeah. The characters, but they come together in this great, again, like uh, Rio Bravo, Howard Hawks fashion. That is also set in the present day of the time of the film. Yeah. Of course. But you're absolutely right. I love that. I, 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 I've, wow, that is such an astute observation about this film. I'm, I'm going to look at it differently now, thanks to your great comment. Wow, well done. It's fun. And, and it's, it's one of those films where there's not really a main character. So you can just sort of, you can attach yourself to anybody that you feel like at the moment. And, and with that, it's a completely different experience every single time. I love that choice. That bravo. Bravo, my friend. Uh man, this is this has been such a fun talk, Daisuke. This has been incredible. Thank thank you for doing this again. No, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. And I must just say thank you so much. You know, I saw the I saw your video. Uh, you know, I, I'm a fan of your channel. And I, I didn't mention it when you mentioned it earlier, but I did see the exorcists uh oh, thank you. that you had. So well done. I mean, you you have your you have the finger on the pulse of, of all these physical media releases all the way down to the nitty gritty details, uh, much better than I could ever hope to, to grasp. So we need people like you to, to keep fanning the flames of, of uh, this uh, very important uh, way of uh, consuming and experiencing cinema. I mean, without, without a doubt, I mean, theaters are very important, but now for our generation, right? Physical yeah. media is the thing, and especially with streaming, which is also great. This is very important. So these details, uh, keep up the great work because we need people like you to keep doing this. So, and well, and and also the fact that you have carry the poster carry <laughs> over your shoulder. I mean that's I, just like it's like cherry. It's like the cherry on top of the Sunday. Really, really. It, it's the carry on top. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know for a fact that you are a big De Palma fan, uh, just like myself. And one of the things that I always try to stress is that De Palma is one of only a couple filmmakers that I could argue has had a magnificent, opus, wonderful, incredible success in almost every genre. Huh. Not many can say that. Ah. Oh. You're right. 
You're absolutely right. Yeah, I was thinking, what about the science fiction? Yes, but of course, Mission to Mars. Yes, of course, of course. What am I? Yes. So you're right. And the gangster film and the period film and, yep. and uh, action and, and action. horror yes, exactly. and drama. Yeah. yeah. And war film. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You're right. Yes. And comedy film and. Oh, well done. What, what what's your I'm I'm sorry, I don't want to uh, belabor your your No, uh, I can stay as long as you want, by all means. What's uh, what's your favorite De Palma film? Or is that a, an unfair question? It I, I mean it's only unfair in the fact that uh if the wind blows by I might feel something very different. Um I like that answer already. Uh I I adore his nuances with the 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 risk that he took in very carefully choosing shots especially early in his career, but the 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 overall risks that he made later in his career brought this overall sense of like counterculture in a way that you wouldn't expect from somebody like De Palma that I have to respect. And it's again, I, I almost impossible, but I, I also may just have to lean into body double because I love it so much. Oh, that's such a great film. That's so that's a that's a huge I'm not like, sure comedy. It's it's yeah. wow, it's a zany film, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's offense. It's really offensive, right? It had caused quite a stir. Culture. So, in that way, it's also very much, I think, uh, a great uh, experience into what makes Brian De Palma films tick and how people yep. react and respond to them. Yeah, but, that or or Blowout would probably be near the top of my list. Yeah, one of the great uses of slow motion I've ever seen in a movie. Oh yeah, uh, and, and sound, of course, obviously, oh, which is yeah. monumental for that film. Oh, well done, well done. What about you? I I don't think I've ever heard your definitive answer for Top to Palma. Oh, that's such a difficult question. It yeah. is. It really is. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, one day it could be The Untouchables. Another day it could be Carrie. Yet another day it yep. could be. Oh my goodness! Um, uh, like, um, um, I mean, Mission Impossible. I love Mission Impossible. Or, or it could be uh, Obsession. Um, from the seventies, uh, oh, yeah. or, or sisters, right? Um, so, or Phantom of the Paradise, or and that, that's another one I love. Yeah. Oh gosh, gosh. Oh. Dress to Kill. That's not one that we've mentioned. Oh, uh, even something yeah. like Snake Eyes, you can find a lot to love. I love Snake Eyes. I love Snake Eyes. You know, I never, I, 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 you know, that was one of those. You know, there's some films throughout your life you think you really love, and you think, why, why was it, why was it critically pan the way it was back in the day i feel that way about snake eyes i feel that way about it's not a brian de palma film mystery men I, you know I, I don't know that's i think that's such a great film yeah snake it eyes really so is. clever yeah uh well my friend this has been incredible i i, I hope someday that you can come back because uh, again you, you're just a, a great guest and i i loved our conversation tonight oh my goodness right and let's speak offline i i want to let Let's let let's do this again. But if it's okay, please come to my channel. I'd love oh, to by all have means. conversation. We should yes, talk please. about you know. Oh my goodness, we've just uh, uh, the tip of the iceberg with Brian De Palma and all the 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 and everything else. So uh, let let's talk offline about this. I'd love to see if we can work something out in the future if our schedules if your schedule works out. I'd love that opportunity, really, my friend. That would be great. Absolutely, I, I'd be thrilled. Uh, thanks everybody for watching tonight. And of course, if you are. Uh, silly and not subscribed to Dice K already, please go check the link in the description below. You should absolutely be watching everything that he does, especially for a deep dive and all the Criterion releases. Um, tonight has been just a magnificent turn, and if you enjoy this conversation, you should hear films that he's watched many times that he can give uh, just some of the most thoughtful commentary that you've heard. You're too kind, Ryan. Thank you so much for this opportunity to to, to talk with you. And I've learned so much, so much about this. Uh, uh, oh, I had such a, a blast. It was a, a pleasure. It was all mine, my friend. Thank you. Well, uh, everybody, we'll see you next Thursday. Have a good week and uh, go watch something else. Thank you very much.